I'm 17, 18, and I drop out of college at 50,000 subscribers. She's like, no, I don't think you should. And I'm like, why? And I'm like getting frustrated. And she's like, we just crossed under our last $5,000 in our account, savings and checkings. And then I film a sneaker collection video to just touch the water of maybe getting back into shoes. And that's where I stole your thumbnail. Mm -hmm. It was legit Tim's sneaker collection video. <laughs> and I was at my lowest point. I'm sitting there overlooking the party, realizing how crazy my life just went from zero to 100. I went from making videos at Ross in the south side of San Antonio to being around the hottest superstars on the planet. I am making way more money than a doctor. Which is how much? <laughs> you wanna know? Yeah. Uh, dog, I think at that time I'm making like. Typically on the podcast, I'll let everybody introduce themselves, how they would like to be introduced, and then we'll go over the accolades and we'll get into the story. So tell the people who you are, where you're from, what you're about. What's up, y'all? My name is uh, Tim. I go by legit Tim on social media. I feel like this podcast is going to be crazy, man, because I'm really going to let you guys know in the real me as much as I possibly can. I, you know, so I've been doing YouTube for 10 years. I do YouTube. Uh, we do TikTok. We use Facebook. We do Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, and I make sneaker videos, but I make them for a younger demographic, I make them for kids. Uh, and so it's pretty much, pretty much what I do. And not only that, you are the biggest <laughs> YouTuber in the sneaker space. You have over a billion views. You're on your way to 10 million followers throughout all the platforms. So it's not only just Lord like God. I yeah, make yeah. videos and I've been doing it for a while. You are literally like the top dog. Is that wild to think? Like, I mean, I think like I think started? statistically, yes. I just don't like to say it, you know, because yeah. I feel like I mean, there's other people in the space, like, you know, Marco's at like, you know, yeah. But it's like ah, we're at this weird space with me and Marco. I feel where it's like we're in the sneaker space, but we're not in the sneaker space. We're like make videos about shoes, but. I don't know, bro. So I don't even think know what to it characterize myself. It allows other myself. people to form an opinion to say I'm the big dog, even though I just that stuff doesn't phase me anymore, bro. No, I get like, it. Like I've been it. in this game for like ten years. Yeah, I really don't care who is the biggest. I give everybody their flowers. I for think sure. everybody earned their spot for a different way. I just I stopped looking at the sneaker community years ago, so I wouldn't compare myself to the sneaker mm -hmm. YouTube. I stopped that like five, okay. seven years ago. I you know, you. I just because like the thing for me is like I don't even know if I deserve the credit for like the sneaker thing because I got a million subscribers off doing sneaker videos strictly. Mm -hmm. And then I was expanding my content and I started doing more of the prank genre. Mm -hmm. So then I feel like I got another mil from that. So technically, yeah, but like also it's just <sighs> we'll get into it. I just yeah, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. I just I'm so, just jumping into it straight up. All right. So you're a big dog in the game, either way, at the end of the sure, day. Sure, sure. You've been doing your thing for a while. you got a lot of experience. you got a lot of knowledge. I hope to continue to learn from it. Uh, we had you out here on the trip for the past few days. First time in Portland. First time in Portland. I'm loving it. Shout out to Portland. It's a dope <laughs> city. It's an amazing city. So uh, before we talk about your trip here to Portland and everything, take me back to the grade school era, the young kid days, what was your mindset like yeah. uh, when it comes to finance, fa like things in the home? How were you know? How was your relationship with the family? Uh, what did you know about sneakers? And what was that kind of first pair? And you know, when you realized like I gotta afford these things myself, all that break me, break down that. So born and school. raised on the south side of San Antonio, Texas, uh, higher lower income family, five kids. Uh, I have four siblings, two brothers, two sisters. I was the oldest, and I always loved performing. I always had, like, an act for performing mm -hmm. before YouTube. Um, I think I was always, like, a showman at heart, a true showman. And really, like, back in 09, when YouTube came out, uh, I just remember going to school and the kids were like, we were in like computer class or something. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, uh, look up look up YouTube. And so, of course, I looked up like the letter U and then tube because I didn't know what it was. That was right, my first right, memory right, right. Okay. of ever finding YouTube. And I looked it up and I saw the website and 
that day I immediately went home and I created an account um, as far as I can remember. And I fell in love with the website. But back then, I was living my life through the internet. Like I was a diehard internet kid, born and raised. Uh, man, and it's crazy because I feel like I was so much more advanced than my peers. Mm -hmm. Like people didn't know what it was at all. And I just fell in love with it, bro. Like mm -hmm. I was creating web pages. I was like creating like I was blogging. I was like creating web pages that I would add access codes that like only my four friends could access. Right. And we could like post secret stuff and like digging through like all of that. Uh, but I fell in love with YouTube. And so how it all started was I saved my money and I bought a $50 camera from Walmart with my allowance. Well, how old were you? I was 11 years old. 11? Okay. Yeah. And I bought a $50 camera from Walmart. And I just, I was looking up to, there was a YouTuber back in the day called Fred. And he was the first ever YouTuber to hit a million subscribers on YouTube. The first ever? First ever in the history of YouTube. Damn. To hit a million. And he was making entertaining videos for kids, for kids my age. Mm -hmm. And I was consuming it. And he had like this. He did this edit where he was doing skits and he made himself into a character. The guy's name was Lucas, but he made himself into a character called Fred. Mm -hmm. And there was like storylines and he was like vlogging skits as this character Fred. And he would make his voice high pitched in the post production. Okay. But he would do things like dancing really fast and stuff. So it was just super, super funny to me. And I just wanted to duplicate that and I wanted to replicate it. Uh, I didn't know how to do the sound effects. So I was like on the editor and like I doubled the speed and it, it just sounded like a chipmunk. And it just, it didn't work out for whatever reason. But I just fell in love with, with YouTube. Similar to you and your story. We talked about a little bit before. Mm -hmm. Me and my boy, we'd be in like the fifth grade filming skits about funny stuff that we thought was funny and we'd on a friday night instead of like gaming up or like watching movies or playing sports we were literally filming youtube videos all mm -hmm. night mm -hmm. like like all night and then we go to bed at the sleepovers and uh it never went anywhere bro it never went anywhere and i did it for like a good six to seven i did it for like a good five years okay before anything really happened and i was just doing skits and the crazy part about it is, this is like all on youtube all on youtube right only youtube i mean you had facebook back then but i never stepped MySpace. on facebook myspace i never stepped on myspace uh but the crazy part about it bro is like every single mexican youtuber that i have met had their blow up from skits and only skits gotcha and my skits never worked like, so i working. went in a completely different space yeah um and i remember back in the swag era came before we get into all that though sure okay you gotta take me lead you gotta, it you gotta oh you want to continue paint the picture bro i paint need the to picture. know like what was the first shoes that you fell in love with and how did you get them and and what was you doing to get your swag that's right the crazy the part though bro like i literally this i'm still saying it before i got even got into sneakers mm-hmm I was in the swag era, but I was what, rocking Supra. Mm -hmm. I was rocking Velado. Mm -hmm. I was rocking Creative Recreation. I was rocking. Creative uh, Rex was going crazy. I was rocking Radii. I was rocking um, Vans. I was rocking uh, skate shoes, like skate brands, DC. I never liked Jordans. Really? Because I, yeah, I never liked Jordans. It just. What made you not like Jordans as a kid? <clears throat> To now, Jordan's being one of your favorite shoes of all time. I just don't think I knew the proper... I wasn't I wasn't raised with the shoe knowledge. Like, I feel like where I'm from, like, everybody just rocks Team Jordans. Mm. So it's kind of just, like, it was just like, uh, I don't know. But when I, when I learned about the history and I learned about this is the shoes and I saw retros, because mm -hmm. where I'm from, really nobody, I don't remember anybody rocking retros till we got into like high school. Really? Everybody, I mean, I feel like the kids had just Team Jordans. So what was your first pair of retros? First pair of retros was the Toro Bravo Fours. This was still before all the YouTube stuff though. Like we're jumping ahead way Okay, I'm just wondering, I was lot. just wondering. Okay, so this is middle school, you're into YouTube. Middle school, I'm into YouTube, and 
I'm into acting. And acting. No sports. No sports. I was. Uh, you just had a couple of friends growing up. Because we're still in middle school, but I'm doing like theater. Okay. I'm doing like like I'm playing Grease. I'm playing Danny from Grease. Danny Zuko. I'm doing the thing. Uh, always the unathletic kid. And then you said you could beat me in football now. For sure. <laughs> Uh, but like no, so okay. I love the confidence. Stepping in, stepping in. I'm doing YouTube on the weekends. I'm doing YouTube on the side. School's getting in the way. Blah 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 blah. Was money ever a thing at that time? Like, was you trying to make money? Was you selling videos? Yeah, like, you yeah. For people? I definitely, I definitely was a young hustler. I feel like, I feel like when I was, um, bro, is as far back as I can remember. Like, I remember just, I was not 16, and you could only get a job at 16 mm -hmm. and there was this one particular day where i don't know why i wanted money i think i wanted like chick-fil-a or something for lunch or mm -hmm. dinner i don't know bro and like my parents couldn't afford it and i just remember looking out the window and i was just like mom i want to make money mm -hmm. and she was like son you know you can't make money you're not 16 you can't get a job. You're not 16. Mm -hmm. And every time in my life, those moments of like being told no, right. it really, really fills you up. It really fires me up. So I had that hunger. I had that passion. Um, and I feel like I was never really a competitive person in like sports or, or the thing, but I was always competitive within myself. Mm -hmm. So I think like even going back to like the YouTube thing, like – I love telling this story because it's crazy, but my parents deleted my YouTube channel five times. Five different um, channels? It was Same almost channel. like it, it, different channels. Damn. Because when you delete it, you can't bring right. it back. They, like, you couldn't it. reactivate it at uh -huh. the time. So like, yeah, I just so remember. you like making videos on the low? I was just like, found out? I was making videos. I never asked for permission. And then, but like we were making videos about like. We were just being, I mean, what, what, what do you find humorous at that age when you're like 11 years old? Like <laughs> underwear and stuff. Right. You know, so I'm like showing my underwear, putting it on my head. And like my parents are thinking like, bro, like perverts are going to watch this. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like right, our right. son is 11 years old making videos about his underwear. And like but perverts you, are going to watch this. You also like grew up in a church? Yes. I grew up always in the church. I was never not in the church growing up. I was just raised in a in a non denominational Christian church, so that so it was church every play a factor. It was church every Sunday, yeah, definitely. And so they deleted my channel, and then I went behind their back and started a new one. And then it was kind of like at the point where it was kind of like on repeat. I remember where like anytime I would get in trouble, instead of grounding me, they were like, "We're deleting your channel." Mm, they just <laughs> knew like that was the ultimate. Consequence. That was the ultimate consequence for me, bro. Oh my gosh! So, but you're like, I'm not stopping. Like, I'm going to make these videos. <laughs> So, this was in what year? 2009? This was like 09, 09. 10, 11. So, you've been at it for over 10 years, clearly. Way more than capacity. 10 years, bro. Way more than 10 years. Because 09. you man, almost 15 years in. Almost 15 years That's in. That's crazy, bro. I'm on like year four. Yeah. Year three, four. Yeah. No, I'm telling you, bro. I'm like learning still. And realistically, <laughs> you're already ahead of me because year four through five, I never made any money. Right. You know, and I don't even think the AdSense thing was a thing back then either. Mm -hmm. Nobody was making money. Everybody was doing it for fun. Right. So getting into high school, I'm starting to find this like passion for fashion and I start discovering all these brands mm -hmm. and I'm looking at Karma Loop and I'm looking at Plunder. What a time. And name some of the brands that used to be on there. What was it? Dude, it was like Mishka. It was like dope. It famous. was like Wasn't Famous on there? Famous was on there. I don't think I ever rock famous. Bro, I was remember LRG on there? Yeah. Or was it LRG yeah. still somewhere? Yeah, else? LRG was on LRG there for was sure. Popping. For sure, bro. Um but I remember when I found Plunder, like Plunder was like the ultimate for me. Cause mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not I'm not buying anything off Karma Loop for sure. It's going to be plunder. Like, I was raised going to the outlets for my school clothes. And it was like, you have $100 to get. All year. To get clothes and shoes. Jeez. <laughs> Rough. Yeah, bro. I, I, I mean, I don't want to I don't want to jump up too far ahead because there's so much we can talk about in this space. For sure. Like, I have so many memories as a kid, bro. Like, 
Like what? Talking about shoes. I needed a new pair of shoes for school. Um, just beat. I remember going to like shoe carnival. And my mom was like, all right, pick out one pair of shoes. And I got a pair of um, polos. Oh, man. They were like in the cool gray colorway, like the cool gray 11s. Uh-huh. But they were like polo shoes. And bro, I remember we paid 20 bucks for them. And bro, I remember those shoes got beat so quick, bro. Like, like, are those even like, are those considered like fakes or what? Like, it's like a legit brand, but it's like they're making a version of the Jordans. Bro. Like, how do you even feel? Like, obviously, then it's way different than now. Compared I just to feel the all the like, like rage that I felt then right now, bro. Because like. They were twenty dollars, and they literally shredded up on me. Like they were horrifying. Really? I literally remember being in social studies class, and one of the girls was like, "Oh," and I'm like, "What?" And she's like, "Your shoes!" Like making fun of me, bro. <laughs> like literally, dude. And I couldn't afford anything else, dog. So that just had you another whole type of hunger. Yeah, like, bro, I, I gotta be like, able to go get this. So okay. There was multiple. Yeah, I got a lot of stories, bro. I what just else? don't want to. I just don't want to fast forward it too much because we're like in the middle school era right now. <clears throat> so talking about making money, I mean, dude, I was. I went to the Dollar Tree. I bought a pack of gum for a dollar, mm-hmm. and I was selling the little gums for like fifty cents. The sticks. The sticks. No, not even the sticks. Oh, it like was like the, the cubes or whatever. Yeah, like the ones wrapped like two zeros. Mm-hmm. And I was selling in fifth grade. Uh, the nerd reported me for selling candy in school. That's crazy. And uh, but it's crazy because I was literally his only friend. <laughs> and then he reported me to the teacher. He was hating. And I didn't get in trouble for it, but I was literally like, "We're not cool anymore." <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like this is my thing. Like was he the same dude you was making videos? You're hurting with? my bread. No, no, no. no okay. No. This so was, was like some. Was your he was like school. a weird, like really, really nerd guy out of shape. Like had no friends, but I was cool with him because I was just a nice guy. But when he hurt my bread, it's like, bro, you're taking my livelihood away. <laughs> so then, I just remember, bro, like we went to recess or lunch or something, and then one day I came back and like all the gum was stolen, bro. No way. Like, they stole the gum out of my backpack. <laughs> but, yeah. Like, Yo, my buddy. <laughs> oh, dude. So, uh, but I sold candy bars. I mean. So, you was hustling. I sold Mexican candy. Lucas. We cut grass. Um, we cut, like, the whole neighbor's grass. I freaking would sell snow cones door to door in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. So, I'd go. Get a thing of shaved ice in the ice chest and get the syrup. And then I will go sell the snow cones door to door in all the neighborhood with a wagon. Um, I teamed up with like one of the house builders Mm -hmm. and he was paying me to like turn on the sprinklers at a certain time and turn them off so that all the yards would get watered. Um, We would... A little bit later, I mean, I started selling on eBay, but, like, it was all a game of, like, hustle when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so, what, what, did, what were you, like, hustling for? What did you want? You just wanted money just to have things? I just think I wanted like, money just to have money, bro. Right. I wanted the women. No, I'm just like, <laughs> nah. no I, I don't know, bro. At that age, I was just hungry for success. Mm-hmm. I think I was raised in a family where, like, my grandpa had his own business and he had a toy store. That he grew up, that he like kind of like we would work there for him. And um, that's kind of like my first taste of business. Mm -hmm. And then like my uncle has his own art gallery, my mom's brother. And then my aunt has her own fashion boutique. It's Mm -hmm. like a punk rock fashion boutique. And then my mom used to sell like maternity clothes on eBay Mm -hmm. before I was like when I was a little kid, like Mm -hmm. when I was a baby. Um, So business has always been in my blood. And so I was just hungry for the success. Um, I don't know if I'm still a true businessman at heart. I was just talking to Beth about that the other day. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm turning into more of like an artist. Just the the innovator, the the creator, the... Yeah, like- I mean, I think like 
I don't, I still, to this day, I don't love negotiating. I don't love being in charge of people. I don't love being the boss. Mm -hmm. I just love making things happen, being creative and the discipline. I, th I guess so. Yeah. I guess so. Um, so, yeah, man. Like, so making money, doing the thing, working hard, doing good in school. I was the kid that it was like they would come to my door and my friends would knock on my door. Hey, you want to play? And I'm like, I got homework to do. I was always very very disciplined you're getting <clears throat> into high school now yeah and getting into high school you're so summer of eighth grade building up right oh, what happened summer talk of about summer grade. of eighth grade i kissed the neighbor <laughs> no i'm just playing now uh, summer of eighth grade me and my boy <sighs> making youtube videos at the time i'm getting into fashion i'm into skater shoes i'm into snapbacks uh but not like sports snapbacks. Mm -hmm. I'm into um, Crooks and Castles. Mm -hmm. I'm into Obey. Okay. With the cheetah print. Okay. With the strap on the back with the cheetah print. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm into Pink Dolphin. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hundreds. Yeah. I'm going to keep spitting. That was like probably like. Everything was like Fairfax Street in LA, mm -hmm. which I drive there all the time now. Wait, when was your first time going to LA? This was like way later. Okay, so um, you haven't experienced LA yet, but you were seeing these things on the internet. I was just, or you just, like, I was just captivated, not even by the stardom of LA, but the fashion. I like at this time in my life, I had more of a passion for fashion than I did for like acting or i mean yeah i still it like i still was acting at school and stuff but like pa fashion was like my thing mm -hmm. in like eighth grade going into high school that was like my everything like streetwear brands i had it as my wallpaper i was just so just captivated by the whole industry of like okay. being fly having swag wait you and were making uh reviews of the clothes weren't you like with the hats and stuff yeah so that's what i'm getting into because okay. like the thing is being like raised in okay raised in like going to church and like being about my stuff i was the kid that i was like very nerdy growing up mm -hmm. so and then like the kids in my neighborhood we lived in a really good neighborhood so all their parents were very successful mm -hmm. so so homeboys that worked for microsoft homeboys that like that was a motivational speaker his mom was a news lady and they raised their kids well. Mm -hmm. So they were all nerds too. Mm -hmm. So we were all the good kids living in this nice neighborhood uh, on a kind of poor side of town. So we were kind of like the nerds. So when I found fashion, it kind of made me realize that I could kind of like express myself and kind of have like this certain swagger to me mm -hmm. um, that I never had before. Mm -hmm. And just styling the fits and... Instagram had just came out back then. So this is like 2010, 2009. And Something girls like were on Instagram. And I didn't have to just talk to like girls from my high school mm -hmm. because all the girls from my high school knew Raise Up. Like, oh, that's the unathletic nerd. Mm -hmm. But then when I started getting swagger, it was like I was pulling chicks. The DMs were going crazy. <laughs> I started becoming this like cool guy for once in my life, I think. And... It was all because of fashion. Mm -hmm. And um, so getting into it, summer of eighth grade. Yeah, I met, I had met my homie uh, Rudy at the time. And uh, and he, he went to a different school, but he transferred to my school for a little bit and completely changed my perspective on the way I looked at a lot of things and kind of helped develop me as like this cool character, um, chill a little bit. And... We were both into like swag and snapbacks, and so there was the, there that we made we made the videos. <clears throat> My sneaker collection that summer, which was all skate shoes, so it was no Jordans or anything. Okay. okay. We did uh, my snapback collection, and then we did a video. Me and Rudy did a video at his house. I was staying the night. It was a summer. We were up late, and I was like, "Let's film YouTube videos." Mm -hmm. He was into it. Um, so we did two skits, and then we did how to wear a snapback. Mm. At the time, I did kind of like an algorithm hack. So, But you didn't realize it. I didn't realize it. So it was how to wear a snapback. 
uh, just a skit. We were being stupid. Mm-hmm. Like, we were being funny. So it was like, you know, the multiple, and we would put like 10 hats on top of each other. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, this is a way to work. Because we had seen other creators that were doing how to wear a snapback, and they were making it funny. Crazy thing is, full circle right now, I'm just going to say it right now, there was this guy, there was this guy named Ken, and his video blew up on it. And this was like, dude, this was like 10, 12 years ago. Mm-hmm. Okay. He made how to wear a snapback. Okay. I made my video because of him. Now he's one of the like come up, coming up comedians that is like traveling really? the US really? with Ralph Lee Barboza. So he's a Latino and I hit him on Instagram and I'm like, cause I see his reel of his stand up. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, this is the kid from 12 years ago that made the snapback video that kind of like why I made that whole video that blew up. Mm-hmm. And so we're cool now. We're going to link soon. Uh, but it was just crazy, bro. That's wild. So he made the How to Wear a Snapback video. I made a How to Wear a Snapback video. And back in the day, you could reply to a video. Mm-hmm. Instead of putting a comment on the bottom of the video like they do now, YouTube had innovated and they made to where you could reply as a video. You could comment on the video as a video. Oh, shoot. But you could finesse it and put. I don't remember that. Dude, it was such a long time ago. Yeah. It was like this. I was in middle school, dude. Right. So you were like freshman or something. Yeah. So I had put the video as I had put my how to wear a snapback video as a comment on one of those guys videos that they had pulled like 600K or something. Mm-hmm. And he approved it because you have to approve it or disapprove it. Mm-hmm. And he approved it. So immediately whenever his, you would, they would go to his video, my video is like one of the little videos right underneath. Uh, Literally right underneath, bro. Right. Like You know where the description is yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. That's where like the, res- the video responses were. Uh, so the then... Heck. Went offline, so, bro. So you you post that video, yeah. Um, with your friend, yep. How many views did it get? Here's the thing. So he ended up going back to his old high school. Mm-hmm. I ended up going to my high school freshman year, mm-hmm. first day of high school. I'm on the bus going home. It's a hard day. Freaking hated it. Um, I, I always thrived in school, bro. Like I was like student council president and like you know theater and yearbook and. You know, I did great, but I hated high school, dude. So really, first day of freshman year, um, I'm on the bus going home, and I open my phone and I go to YouTube and I look at my video, thirty thousand views. This is big back then. This is when I'm pulling like sixty, a hundred for like five right? years. Yeah. So I tell my boy, and I'm like, and it, it's funny because I don't really talk to him, but we still have each other on socials. But I bet if I told you now, he's gonna deny this, but. I specifically remember hitting him, and I was like, bro, the video got 30,000 views. And he said, there's no way the video got 30,000 views or whatever. I'm like, bro, we got to keep running it, bro. Like, you got 30,000 views? He's like, nah, bro, nah, 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 nah. Like, there's no way, bro. Your video did not get 30,000 views. So I'm like, bet. So I start running the fashion videos. Freshman year, I discovered Air Jordans. That was when the... Um, Sorry, I was, I was, I, I'm doing the fashion videos, right? I'm doing the thing. And then I think skip to my, skip to my sophomore year, a year later, mm-hmm. I'm still doing the fashion videos, getting a little bit of traction. It's doing okay. I don't have money. I don't have money for stuff. Mm-hmm. For the videos. For the videos. Right. This is weird. Cause like, this is a weird story, but like my uncle, he passed away, but like he was a big manager of like. A thrift store chain in San Antonio. Okay. They got a lick of of uh, Guitar Hero sets with the guitar on it. <laughs> it was like the Guitar Hero 1. Right. So it was like, at the time, it was kind of like not really the hottest game, but it was like you couldn't find them anywhere. They were kind of vintage. Right. So my grandpa, having the toy store, mm-hmm. bought the whole lot for very cheap. Mm-hmm. So my grandpa tells me, he's like, um, I'm into eBay at the time. And my grandpa tells me, he says, uh, if you can sell these on eBay or the internet or whatever, I will sell you them for $15 each. Okay. He has like 15, 20 of them. I list them up on eBay for 100 bucks each. Mm-hmm. Cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. Bro, I'm making sales like crazy. Mm-hmm. Every day it's like selling one or two. Mm-hmm. I'm making crazy bread, bro. At church, it's like ringing. It's going crazy. <laughs> it's going like crazy. I uh, 
this is when the Fire Red 3s came out. It was a summer before sophomore year. Fire the Red Fire Red 3s were... 2013? Sure. Okay, it's probably 2013. Fire Red 3s just came out. Toro Bravo 4s had just dropped. Might have been 2012. That shoe changed my life forever. It's kind of weird because... I don't know. Red was really big back then. I don't know. Yeezy 2 was mm-hmm. around Red right October. Yeezy 2 came, yeah, right around that time. Right. So seeing the Toro Bravo 4... Jordan 4s weren't even popular back then, bro, like they are now. The Toro Bravos came out. They sat. Pro. They, were they easy. sat. They were pretty easy I to do, get. I knew nothing about Jordan. So by the time I decided I wanted the Toros, they were gone. Mm. Off the mall. Mm. I literally fantasized about this sneaker night and day, bro. I was like looking up reviews, dude, just teasing myself on TV. I would just be watching everybody's review on the Toro Bravo 4s going crazy. Mm-hmm. I ended up buying the store Bubble Fours from eBay for a stupid amount. I don't even remember. Uh, but I had the G- the Guitar Hero money. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that was my first pair, you know. But then the well ran dry. Mm-hmm. I sold all of the I sold all of the Guitar Heroes. I didn't have money to keep doing the videos. So at the time... Uh, it was like Halloween, mm-hmm. and my mom was like, well, let's go look for um, Halloween costumes at the thrift store. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, mom, like that's embarrassing. What if somebody sees me? <laughs> I don't want to go to the thrift store. Like That's that's embarrassing. That's horrible. Okay. This was before, way before all the vintage community and all this took over. Nobody was thrifting back then. Right. <laughs> I don't even think Beth knows this story. But uh, Today's partner is ShopDNAShow.com. Are you tired of wearing low quality gear? I completely understand. I made a personal mission to go out and find higher quality stuff and give it to you guys at an affordable price. And not only because of that, I have to wear this stuff every day and I don't want to be wearing cheap clothing all the time. So I want to make sure that you guys know about it and are understanding that we have a lot of cool stuff coming out as well. Hit the link down below or pinned or wherever it may be. It's going to be shopdnashow.com. There's new drops every single month. I'm excited to see you guys in the gear. And now let's go ahead and get back to the podcast. Beth is is my wife. wife, Right now we're married. So we'll get into that too. So I go into the thrift store to get this Halloween costume and it's my aunt, my aunt's throwing a Halloween party I'm super young I see the hottest girl in school in the thrift store <laughs> and she's like hey what are you doing here and my face flushes red bro like just red on my face dude I'm like embarrassed bro I'm hot <laughs> and I'm like I, 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 I was just buying a Halloween costume like we're just I just thought because there's funny stuff here that you can't really find at the Halloween store so I'm just buying and she's like oh I'm buying jeans and I was like at that moment everything switched for me right she will never know like I yeah that girl will never know this story which is crazy um <laughs> her name was her name was Kimberly uh and so then after that, I'm like, well, thrift stores must be cool if the hottest girl in school shopping here. Right. And so uh, after that, I started going to thrift stores and looking for clothing and stuff. Was you recording videos at the time doing that? Bro, there was like a really, really small subsection of YouTubers that, dude, they were not big at all. They were like 10,000 subscribers, mm-hmm. um, 15,000. It was like the Iceman. It was... um. Professor Snap and um, those guys, they don't even do YouTube anymore. It's been like 10 years. Okay. But they were doing this this thing and they were all doing it. And it was it was a title called Trip to the Thrift. Mm. And so like I remember like the Iceman, he was like making it real cinematic. He had a DSLR and then Professor Snap. Oh, S- there's somebody else that does that right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I seen him. Probably. The black dude. Uh, what's his name? He does the same thing. He makes like cinematic, like trips to the thrift. Like that's what it is. Like, I don't know, bro. Now it's so big. Yeah, like, there's so he probably, basically like, just recreated the thing is, that with that dude. The thing is, the thing is, um, there's probably like a hundred people doing it now. Yeah, you know, because sure. the vintage community just blew out of proportion. <laughs> but back then, it was like not even like it was so underground, bro. Mm-hmm. And like Professor Snap was like the cool guy, and he was like really big into snapbacks, and he would like go to thrift stores, and he was like finding snapbacks and then he was like showing you how to like 
customize snapbacks and restore snapbacks by like cutting the snaps off of hats and then like stitching them to other hats yeah, 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 and it yeah. was just like this weird like cool thing bro i just became obsessed with like that culture and it wasn't hypebeast culture it was different it was like I'm in Texas and I've always lived in Texas and it's like I'm here in It's like a bunch of like huge thrift stores out there. Right. But like nobody on that like cinematic y like cool music. Like at the time this is when like Fousey Tube and like Vitaly and Roman Atwoods are like going crazy with the pranks. And that was the only era that I wasn't on mainstream YouTube because mm -hmm. I was so obsessed with the fashion community. Mm -hmm. And um so then I started doing trips to the thrifts. And we're looking for vintage clothing and we're looking for shoes. And my mom, I couldn't drive because I'm 16 at this mm -hmm. time. And so my mom drives me every Saturday, bro. We go to every thrift store in the Shout city. Out to mom. Just filming on iPod Touch. Really? Yeah. iPod Touch. I didn't have a phone. I had like a flip phone. Damn. That's crazy. I'm taking it home. I'm chopping it. I'm editing it. So we did trip to the thrift number one, two, three, four. Blah, 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 blah. We did like hundreds of them, um, and then and then it got to the point where like, so I got really lucky, bro, because trip to the thrift number four specifically, I had found a pair of bread fours at the thrift store. Oh shoot! And I knew nothing about thumbnails, because um, at the time you couldn't add thumbnails. Yeah, it was you just couldn't like, add thumbnails. Yeah. But YouTube accidentally framed the video. At that point. When I was just like, it was a big picture of the bread force. And mm -hmm. it was like, trip to the thrift. And that video was like 30,000 views. Um, then another one hit when I went to the Ben Goodwill, like number seven. And it was like Jordan 6's, trip to the thrift. Mm -hmm. And then, bro, like, they just started hitting, bro. And I was just doing that and only that. And then I started, like, analyzing what I was doing. And I was like, okay, thrift store. Okay, thrift store. Um... Let's do this new series. And to this day, I will, I still, I'm the godfather of the series, I believe. Because I added, this is probably a Mexican thing, but I added flea market finds. Mm -hmm. It was like trip to the thrift flea market finds. Mm -hmm. So then every Wednesday, the flea market was open. So I would go to the flea market mm -hmm. uh, in the morning and you'd be finding Jays, bro. You'd be finding like, I'd be like filming mm -hmm. all of it on my iPod Touch. I bought a GoPro. GoPro was my first YouTube camera. Okay. GoPro 3 or something. Jeez. And I'm filming, going to the uh, flea markets. Um, and and so it was like trips to the thrift and flea market finds. And it was just like boom, 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 boom. Every Saturday and Friday. And I'm editing on my computer and I'm young. And I start getting my license, you know. So I start going with my boys. And me and all the homies are going. And we're thrifting. And they're into it. And they're looking for Ralph Lauren was popular at that time as we continue. And, you know. Remember the Ben had polo? The which one? And they used to be like, Ben had polo. It used to be like on World Star <laughs> and stuff. I have no idea. You never seen that? I have no idea, bro. bro all right, but back like... in the day, when I was like, when Polo was coming up, like, well, Polo's been around forever, but back in the day when Polo was really hitting like that, when people was getting the sweatsuits and the little Polos and everything, like, there was this skit on like World Star, and he'd be like, Ben had Polo. Probably. Ben had Polo. And he'd be like pulling up like all this Polo, like these tees, like on the hangers and stuff. Crazy. And be like, damn, his Polo collection crazy. Like, <laughs> Bro, it was so Dude, viral. Polo, and then, so at that time, it was like Polo Ralph Lauren and Tommy Hilfiger. Tommy Hilfiger had Ed Hardy? No. Ed Hardy wasn't. Ed Hardy wasn't. Really. That was after. But we were looking for specifically vintage Polo and vintage Tommy Hilfiger. Okay. And I remember, bro, we found a Polo, and it's just like a Polo with a little guy on it. Yeah. And it's just like, we're freaking out, bro. Um, and we're going, and like, we're going with the homies, and like, it was like the thing. Nobody cared about money. Nobody mm -hmm. was getting paid. We just did it to hang out. Mm -hmm. um, so then I started getting into more Jordans and stuff. And I was never a reviewer, bro. Like, I just, I never was that type of guy. Um, but then I remember, I'm trying to think what how we got from A to B. Oh, so it was like thrift stores. And then it was, um, from there, I was like, what else and this was like really i was like known for the thrift store stuff but this was what i was known for on youtube like i was it's funny because i've been around for so many years and so many generations and like seven years ago 
I discovered. Oh yeah, yeah. Because so I added, I added um, thrift pawn. I added pawn shops. Mm-hmm. So I started going to pawn shops, seeing uh, LeBron tens for like forty bucks. You know, seeing Air Jordan, seeing all these sneakers at pawn shops for mad cheap. I add pawn shops. It's like a Friday night, bro. I get my license. I'm not hanging out with the homies. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing. I'm not doing drugs. I'm not smoking. I'm filming pawn shop finds, <laughs> like for cheap. I'm going home. I'm editing it. I'm on my grind, bro. And then what really, 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 really took me to the next level, bro? I started filming at Ross mm. when you could find. Wait, so okay, how many subs did you have around this time? Like as you're on this grind, like. I think this is like from zero to a hundred. Hundred so thousand. Like this is like over ten thousand for sure, but it's like maybe like. 50,000, 60,000, 70,000 real slow, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so um, I discovered Ross, dude. Mm-hmm. And I am the first and only guy to do videos at Ross. And this is when you could find the Kobe's, you could find the KD's, mm-hmm. you could find the LeBron's, you could find all kinds of people were finding Dornbecker's, mm-hmm. like at Ross's. Fragments. Yeah. So all types of stuff. So we were hitting the Ross. Um, we added Marshalls. Okay. We, I was doing Burlington Co Factory videos, trip to Burlington, like, cause I was continuing with this theme of like shopping in the thrift, but like for steals. Mm-hmm. So it was like just vlogging like my finds in Texas, and um, they started calling me the Ross Boss. Mm-hmm. That was my name on YouTube. Was like, like the Ross Boss. Um. <laughs> that's wild so you're like already establishing like this was like a whole era bro this brand this was like an entire era dude okay so this is happening before we get into you know because we're going to talk a lot about you know content especially right like at this point you're making some money right Mm. so you're doing brand deals no brand deals you're doing just youtube adsense no affiliate marketing no nothing at the time it was just like YouTube ads. Man. Just YouTube, 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 YouTube. But I was pumping like probably every other day videos. So how many million views do you think you was getting a month? <sighs> Dude, that's too hard to tell. I don't even. Like a couple million? Or you think you were getting Maybe more than that? Maybe not even a mil. Maybe like a mil? Maybe not even a mil. What a channel with 100,000 subscribers to get a million views a month is solid. Like that's real I don't even solid. think I was getting a million views a month. Which is like not easy to do for a lot of people. It's hard, bro. But I don't remember like making like 10,000 or anything like that. But you that. was like making I wasn't a little even, bit bro, of bread. I don't even think I was making like 4,000. Like what? A month? I know what I was making. What? Because I specifically, my my boy was literally, um he was working construction at the time. Okay. And we did a trip where... Um, I had my first car and this is when me and Beth were like dating at the time, mm-hmm. me and my wife now. And he brought his girlfriend and we were going to film videos in Austin. Mm-hmm. So we're driving an hour to Austin in my car, my beat up car, bro. And we get to Burlington Co Factory and I'm start filming, looking at the shoes. And I said, bro, like you'll never, I was so like, everybody started getting a job at the time. And I was like, I don't want a job. So I kept doing the YouTube 17 thing. 17 years old now. Yeah, we'll say like 16, 17. Okay. 17, yeah, 17. Okay, so like junior year of high school. Right. So I... School life at the time, really what allowed me to propel the YouTube channel is I got homeschooled sophomore year. Mm. So I had church. Why did you get homeschooled? Bro, it was just so much pressure. Like I... Okay, so I had church. I had... um. This was when, like, you you were in sophomore in high school. I was mascot. I was doing powerlifting. I was doing uh, theater. I was, like, I had, like, eight classes, biology. Like, I was just stressed out of my mind, dude. And And I was doing YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. And I remember specifically... It was before Thanksgiving break because I didn't even make it past Thanksgiving break. Okay. So it was around this time of year that I left high school, however many years ago, and the one to thing that really to be homeschooled. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the one thing that really triggered me, bro, is I was really into fashion, and that's when uh, Ben Trill was big. Mm-hmm. Tour bubble four is Ben Trill, so I'm wearing a Ben Trill crew neck, and I specifically remember, I made a comment to some girl right, in biology, and I'm like. I tell her something. I don't even know what it was. 
And she looks at me and she goes, says the guy in the Ben Trill shirt and the entire class busts out laughing. And I was so distraught. I was so destroyed. Um, <laughs> so but, I was so, but I was so different than everybody else, bro. Yeah. I went to a school that was like outside of San Antonio City Limits. Mm -hmm. I went to a country school. Mm -hmm. They didn't know anything about brands. They didn't know anything about what was cool. The kids in the city... They were probably rocking with it. Right. But nobody in my school, like, dude, they were wearing, like, country stuff to school, bro. Or, like, just, like, Hollister. Nobody was hip. Nobody was, I was online. I was seeing what these people were doing. I was seeing Snapback Restorations. I was seeing Pink Dolphin. I was seeing what they're doing on Fairfax. Mm -hmm. And nobody in my school, maybe, like, two people, had any idea what was cool. Mm -hmm. They thought that what was cool was, like, Hollister. Damn, so you that you just like I didn't I fit in at all. Here. At like, that point I, I stopped dead. fitting in at all. Right. And I'm such a loud figure that everybody in the in the school either loves me or hates me. Right. At this point I don't believe I was bullied. I was just notorious. Right. Like the girls started going crazy for me sophomore year, bro. Like I was it sounds stupid, but like I was literally the good kid for one, so I was super churchy. And I would have like seniors that would be trying to sleep, like skip class with me to sleep with me. Right. Like the hottest girl in seniors. <laughs> and I'm so innocent and I'm so good and I'm so churchy that I'm like not for it. They're fighting. Dude, the seniors are literally fighting for me at this point. So it's like, it's like a lot of stress too because then it's like that was homeboy from the basketball team's girlfriend and they're hating on me and like dudes have it out for me and like dudes hate me and like. It was a big ball of just, just like, like I'm just, bro, kid. I am like the standout kid. I'm right. doing theater. Like, I'm the star of the show. I'm freaking doing YouTube. I'm wearing the hottest brands. Right. Like, bro, it was just, I gotta like, go. it was a big ball of just mess, dude. <laughs> so she says that comment uh, destroys me completely. I'm like, screw these people. They have no idea what's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I had the opportunity. I was a freshman. And going into theater, I guess, you know, glory to God. I was so talented that no freshmen have ever skipped into um, into uh, competitions. As okay. a freshman, you would okay. not do theater competitions. Right. I did theater competitions as a freshman, and I won awards mm -hmm. more than the seniors and, like, the people above me, the main characters. So my theater teacher at the time, he really sees something in me, and um, he sees that I can be great, and he sees that I can take over what the upperclassmen have built. Um, but at the same time, dude, I'm doing mascot on Friday nights. I'm doing church play lead character that I'm going to rehearsal every day till, like, 7 o'clock. Right after school, I'm driving from theater practice, and I'm going straight to church practice to do more theater. And then I'm going home, and I'm editing. I'm doing homework. I'm, like, just fully capacitated, bro. So Thanksgiving break hits, and um, I was supposed to learn all my lines over Thanksgiving break. Mm -hmm. They gave us homework over Thanksgiving break in addition to our homework, and I'm rehearsing for church play. Um, and... Uh, Bro, I literally, uh, when it was time to go to school, I literally broke down and started crying, like sobbing. I just broke, dude. It was like this massive buildup of just like being hated on and like doing so much work and like just being not socially acceptable. Mm -hmm. And it just like broke. And I was like, I don't want to go to school. I do not want to go to school. And so after that, my parents homeschooled me. So what was that like? You that was cool, honestly, bro. If I would have never been homeschooled, I would have not been the man I am today. Hmm. If I would have stayed in high school, knowing the lunatic that I am today, I would have gotten sucked up into the parties. <laughs> I would have gotten sucked up into the like sex. I would have gotten sucked up into the drinking, the smoking, the like. I would have been a loser. Right. You know what I mean. At but I feel like all, at the end yeah. of it all. But I feel like because I was able to get away from all that right before it became so extreme. Because mm -hmm. sophomore year, you're still, like, fresh, especially the beginning of sophomore year. Right. Junior and senior year, you're going crazy. You know what's up. You know how to navigate. You're trying to figure out. Yo, you're going yeah. crazy. You're like, oh, I got this. You're going crazy. Yeah. Because I heard stories about what happened when I left, and they got crazy. <laughs> so. Okay, so. I decide to just be on my grind. You're homeschooling. And Who's I have your this homeschool teacher. Nobody. I, I have this online program. Okay. And uh, 
when it came to the quizzes, I uh, skip, 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 quiz, <laughs> search it up, <laughs> pop whatever. All the answers for the homeschool thing mm-hmm. was all online. So, I so just, basically, you was just finessing this. this I just copied and I pasted and I filmed my YouTube videos. So you was just prioritizing YouTube, really? Yeah, and because I was, I was homeschooled, I got out of biology. It's not required by the state of Texas mm. to learn science. <laughs> That's crazy. So, so I get my, I get my, uh, I get my high school degree sophomore year. You got your degree. Sophomore year? Not my degree, my high school diploma, sophomore year. Or, your diploma? or my it wasn't even a diploma. Like you it's like a high school? I got your high GED? school sophomore year. My GED. You got your GED. So then sophomore I start going year. to I start going to early or sorry, no no no. I do the thing sophomore year and then I start going to early college junior year. So what did you do about like don't you have to take tests to like be able to get past like so stuff? I'm going into early college. They have a program for homeschool kids. Okay. Junior year. And <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking. This so, just does not sound right at all. <laughs> so, I take a test to do early college, okay. and I pass it. And um, <laughs> so you and did I learn a couple it. things. You learned a couple things. It was like, dude, it was so easy. Yeah. It was like like stuff that I known forever. Right. So I pass it, and then um, I'm able to do college and high school at the same time. So I'm able to finish high school while I'm learning in college classes okay so during the i cho- the first semester i choose all night classes so i can only do two classes a week because i'm still a high school student so you're 17 at the time 17 at the time okay two classes a week night classes mm-hmm. um still making a ton filming of YouTube, YouTube, videos. youtube videos during the day right okay going to college at night okay so there's nothing i don't do anything during the day other than film youtube videos so by so I'm going ham. So by this time, you're what four years deep into YouTube on the low. I'm making money at this time. You got over a hundred thousand subs. Yeah, we're. Um, what does making money look like? What is that like? How dude, much? I think it was like five hundred a week or something. Five hundred bucks know, a week. Four hundred a week. Seventeen like in high school, making videos, doing your thing. Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and so late semester, and then next next semester I do the day classes. Mm-hmm. And I rekindle with all the seniors that were trying to get at me because now they're in college. Right. Okay. And so I'm a junior and I'm chilling with them in college. Right. And so we ended up just like, they're more mature at the what time. What was the college? It was like a community college. It wasn't anything special. Okay. It was like a tiny community. Okay. So like a two year. Yeah. Okay. So then they're in college and uh, I'm vibing way heavier with them because I, I realize now that like, I feel like the reason why I never fit in in high school was because... I honestly feel like my maturity level was so much higher than them at the time because they were so focused on things and I'm focused on YouTube videos. I'm focused on making money. I'm focused on the real life stuff Right. Okay. that like when they got out of high school, it's like, damn, what do I do? And for me, I was doing that in high school. So, okay. So, so I'm in early college. You're with YouTube at uh-huh. 17. You're making a little bit of bread each month. Yep. I don't need Are a job. Like- I'm making enough bread to where I don't need a part-time job. I'm right. not like loaded. Right. But you're making enough. You're still living at home. Mm-hmm. So now you don't have to worry about the overhead on that. You nope. just got your car. Yep. Okay, so expenses aren't real crazy. involved in church. I'm driving a rinky dink. Heavy, uh, at the church. heavy in church, bro. So second semester, I take the day classes. I'm vibing with the seniors from high school because they're mature. I'm mature. We're great. I'm making bread. I'm walking class to class. I'm looking at my analytics. I'm so this time I got super overloaded. This is probably my most the time that I grounded the most in my life. So I'm going to give you a day in the life of me, okay? Mm -hmm. So At that age. At that age. So it's Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. I'm hitting up the flea market Mm -hmm. early in the morning before I have class. Mm -hmm. So it's flea market I'm filming at 7 a.m., 6.30 a.m. Immediately after the flea market, I go to my two classes. I do my two classes and that pretty much lasts until, or I think I was taking more, I forgot, but... I was taking classes. Um, when that ends, it's like three, four o'clock in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. I go to the gym and I lift for an hour, okay. and then I go and swim laps in the pool for an hour. Mm-hmm. Immediately when that ends, I'm off to church to help with the theater thing over there, the ministry, whatever. So I'm in that till like, you know, sometimes when they had service on a Wednesday, it would be like eight, nine o'clock. I'm getting out. Mm-hmm. I immediately go home from there. And I start my homework and editing the video. Damn. 
So I'm up till like midnight. Okay. So it is a full day. So you're like sleeping for like four hours. It's like a full day of just work. Mm-hmm. And that's when I was just like, dude, at that point, I was just going crazy. You have that young, hungry energy. I'm in college. I am mm-hmm. don't have no obligations. My parents are going easy on me at this point. Um, And everything's looking bright. Everything's looking good. Uh, and then... After that semester, I graduated from college, mm-hmm. um, and I start go or I graduated from high school. So I start going to college full time. Mm-hmm. I go to college full time. I go to a different college downtown San Antonio okay. community college. So still, I'm doing YouTube. I'm doing com- I'm doing um I'm doing the college thing, and I think I'm still doing the church. I'm still doing the church thing. Okay. So when I met Beth, my wife now, you um, met her at the church. Yeah, so her family, her family, owned the church. It was right across from the college. Oh, okay. So you was like, I'm pulling up to a new. My church. grandpa had been going to that church forever, and oh, okay. he told my family to go. So then I became really, really, really cool with all her cousins. Okay. And we're like boys, and they try to convince me to let their cousin date me because Beth is like telling my mom like, "Oh, you raised such a good son." My mom's best friend is telling me like, "You should give that girl Beth a chance." Her cousins are telling me to give her a chance. Everybody's like, "What's Everybody. up?" Everybody, right. because like, so I give Beth a chance. So are you seventeen or eighteen at this time? I'm seven. Mm. Eighteen. Maybe. I think around this time. Well, because I step back a little bit, so I'm like seventeen, eighteen around that age. Anyways, yeah, okay. so we'll say eighteen. So I'm eighteen. She's seventeen. <clears throat> No, I'm 17, she, I'm 17, yeah, I'm 17, she's 16, because we met when we were like 15, 16, so, but when we started dating, we were like 16, 17. Okay. So, I give her a chance, and we immediately hit it off, everything's great, and her whole family turns on me. Turned they on you? They hate me. What? They absolutely the cousins too? hate me, the cousins too. What? Screw you, Joel. <laughs> and Big Tim. So they hate me, bro. And um, literally, no, Joel was the only one that didn't switch up on me, okay. which was my cameraman and my uh, GJ knows him, my cameraman, my editor yeah, yeah, for like yeah, five yeah. years. But his brother hated me. Um, so Beth went through like this really traumatic experience where like her sister actually passed away because right. she had a, something wrong with her lungs and she was in the hospital for like nine months and I was trying to comfort Beth. We're talking on the phone every night at this point. Mm-hmm. Her family's going through hell. They're mm-hmm. struggling through all this stuff. Um, <laughs> I went to the hospital that when she was passing, and they literally kicked me out. I was there to comfort Beth. She was crying in my arms, and then the grandpa literally kicked me out of the hospital. He's like, That's you need to leave crazy, now. Bro. <laughs> bro, like, everybody would go over to their house after church to, like, comfort the family and stuff, what, what they're going through, and they wouldn't let me come in. Like... What? It was so toxic because I was like 16, 17 being treated like – I was 17 just being treated like garbage or 18, whatever. I was a young kid just being treated like just the good kid on my grind in college at a young age doing YouTube like the just – everybody's parents wanted me for their daughters because I was such a good kid at the church. But I didn't like none of them. They were the homegirls. But I wanted Beth, but they didn't want me at all. They like wanted nothing to do with me. Mm-hmm. But period. she wanted you. She wanted me. So, so at, at this least point, y'all was there for each other. So though. at this point, I'm making bread from YouTube. It was one Bible study, and I remember we do prayer requests. So we had that on. We had Bible study on Wednesday, which mm-hmm. is at my parents' house. My parents have been doing a Bible study for like ten years, and then we had youth group on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. So it was just really big in church. Mm-hmm. So it was like YouTube, school, church, gym, everything. Um, so I remember one time at Bible study, uh, they were like, do y'all have any prayer requests? Mm-hmm. And it was like all of my brother's friends that were there. They were like still in high school. So I raised my hand and I say, I want to be um, self-sufficient by next month. Mm-hmm. And everybody laughed. But we prayed for it. And I got this one sponsor. Mm-hmm. And they wanted dedicated, like they wanted a mention every single week. De- um, like not dedicated. I don't know why that's coming to my mind. Uh, guaranteed, like guaranteed video every single week. Long-term partnership. So they were paying me. It was that, uh, I don't know if you should, should I say it, cabbies.com. And it was like where you put that little ad in your video. It was like, cabbies.com, design your own snapbacks and hats. What? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> or no. I don't think so. It was, like a, it was like a, they had their own commercial and it was like five seconds long. Oh, maybe. they, so oh, all you had to do was just plug it in. Put it in there. Video. So it was like, it was like, imagine having like the GoPro thing where it was like, whoosh, 
like just yeah. the logo. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it was literally like just their logo, and it said cabbies.com.com, cabbies.com in text, and the voiceover was like cabbies.com, design your own snapbacks and hats, and it was like five seconds long, mm -hmm. and I had to put that at the beginning of my video, so the intro. Okay. Um, two hundred bucks. Every week. Five seconds, two hundred bucks every, every week. week. That's good. I was making two hundred bucks five seconds right. in five seconds. Right. And um, so I was able to get my first apartment. And I'm 18. I move into my first apartment. It's 800 bucks a month. They're covering it because mm -hmm. they were paying me 200 a week. So it was like you know, lining up. Yep. Right. So the sponsor was taking care of that. I had my own place for six months. Uh, still going through all the BS with Beth and her family. Um, what was it like moving out of the house, like getting your own spot at that age? Because you were dude, like already coming to I yourself. tripled down on the work at that point. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, com I completely forgot. Uh, mm, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think about the time period. Right before I moved out, I dropped out of college. Okay. End of the... Yes, 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 yes. End of the school year comes... I decide there's this, year? so there's this kid from my city, right? Okay. He's like super in the, into the internet. I met him somewhere down the line, super into the internet. And he says he's making 20,000 a month. He's my age, 18 oh, years old, 20,000 a month. And you know what he was doing? YouTube. Nope. Editing. Nope. Gaming? He was selling fake Yeezys. Oh my He was gosh. reselling fake Yeezys online. Yeah. And he was making... 20000 a month. That's crazy. So, but anyways, the the reason I say that is because it was like, there is money to be made on the internet. On the internet. Yeah. So I'm like, dude, I'm thinking, I'm sitting in my living room. I'm like, bro, should I just do this full force? I'm at, so you asked where I was at subscriber-wise. I'm at 50,000 subscribers. Okay. I'm, I'm, before I moved out, I'm 17, 18, um, and I'm at 50,000, and I drop out of college. At 50,000 subscribers. Okay. And then that's when I doubled down on everything. Started getting that sponsor. Moved See, out from like, my I'm first big place. Dog. I'm doing this. Bro, I felt great. I felt great. I remember that's when the week, like, I first moved into my crib. It was a bachelor pad, one bedroom. Texas is cheap for rent. Right. The weekend song came out. I feel it coming. <laughs> I feel it coming, babe. So I'm just, like, listening to that song, thinking about, like, I'm going to be a big YouTuber. Like, I'm really going to do this. Mm -hmm. I start getting into Gary V's books. Mm -hmm. Gary V starts getting big online. I'm 18. I'm just, like, going to sleep listening to his audiobooks, dude. Right, just right. praying to God. I'm like, I want to do this with my life, God. Please allow it to happen. Like, the hardest belief in my being. I'm asleep in my bed. And, um... And, and also that time, I was not only doing the fashion channel still, but I decided I'm going to daily vlog. Mm. So I'm daily vlog. I'm out of college. I got my first place. I'm daily vlogging called Legit Lifestyle, getting 1,000 views a day. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and I did that for like a year, daily vlogging every single day. Okay. And I'm doing the fashion channel. So um, you got two channels, three channels? Two channels. Two channels. Okay. One is daily vlogs. Okay. The other is daily to semi-daily videos for youtube okay for the singer channel okay so you're banging so i'm going out. to ross i'm going to burlington i'm doing the thing i got my first crib uh home boys are coming over from the neighborhood from high school like just like freaking out that i got my own place right. and then beth you know me and beth are still dating and stuff and then it got to the point where like I was always trying to do the right thing. We were like going through fighting, you know what I mean? Like, you know, off and on, little kid stuff. I try to take off to the military. I try to join the um Really? What is it called? The um the National Guard. Okay. So my dad's friends are recruiter for the National Guard. So he just like kept trying to recruit me. We broke up this one time and I literally um I tried to go out into the National Guard. They messed up my paperwork and I had like surgery down here. Mm -hmm. So like they I don't know. They had a problem with it. So they just kept slacking. Um, so I ended up not going to the National Guard, which I feel like I wouldn't have done YouTube if I would have left. That's crazy. Yeah. That was when I was literally like before I dropped out of college, I was on the verge of just leaving everything to go to the National Guard because I was pissed because of Beth. That's why. Because we broke up. So <laughs> I get my own place. I'm grinding it out. Um, and me and Beth are just like boyfriend and girlfriend in the honeymoon phase. Just like going to sleep on the phone every night together. We start rebelling because her dad still didn't want me around. Mm -hmm. So her mom's in on it now. We start sneaking out, like going on dates, and I'm dropping her off. I'm still in my rinky-dink car. 
Um, what was you driving? You keep talking about this car. So I had a my first car was given to me by my grandfather's wife, which is not my grandma, but my grandfather's wife. I guess grandma now by marriage. I don't know, but it was like a Sion. Okay. Like a all gold, like little broken down car. The transmission was all broken and stuff. <laughs> you know what? But yes, when we were dating, I was, and then I forget if it was. I think we were still dating, but I ended up had bread. Oh, so my grandma, my dad's mom, she had saved up for us like a savings account mm-hmm. since we were a baby. She would put money into it every time, and we couldn't access it till we were eighteen. I was eighteen at the time. It was 10 racks. Mm. So I take it out and I buy a Dodge Charger, a 2008 Dodge Charger, all black. <laughs> they got custom leather seats. Yeah. So I'm whipping the Charger, man. Woo, bro. At this, like before, when I was making money on YouTube, like before I started making 500 a week, like even the, you know, the girl that I used to date in church was making fun of me, like, oh, I make more money than you. Like, I didn't make a lot of money, bro, because mm-hmm. I was doing YouTube. They had jobs right, right, at, like, right. Chick-fil-A and stuff. Mm-hmm. So they were making, like, okay money. Uh, but YouTube, with you, you, it's not like a, it's not like a, you're going to for sure make this. So I'm, dr- I'm whipping a charger now. I got my first place. I got a girlfriend. I'm doing the channels. Uh, I even got a job at a sneaker store. Uh, to learn the expertise of shoe store. Okay. Because I thought, you know, maybe I want to do this in the future. So I did that for like a couple months, not too long. Okay. So then Beth turns 18. I'm 19. And we're still having a really, really horrible time because they're her parents and her family. Okay. Like horrific. Um, For my 19th birthday, we got a like a big house on the beach. And all my church friends came, girls and guys. And Beth's parents decided to come and um, they like, she's like not talking to me at my birthday because she doesn't want her dad to get mad. Mm. And I just lost it, bro. And like, I broke up with her and like, so we are going through like the worst boyfriend and girlfriend experience you Mm -hmm. could ever imagine. And she turns 18. Okay. I turn 19 one month before she turns 18. In February, she turned 18. Um, so we leave the church right after the birthday incident when I turned 19. My dad's going to, we're going to churches and he just feels this calling on his life. Like he's been doing the Bible study for 10 years. Mm-hmm. And so he starts a home church. Mm-hmm. So he gets ordained as a pastor and he has a home church. I say this because when Beth turns 18, I'm like, you're 18 now. The way I was raised, you're an adult. Your parents have no say on you anymore. Right. Um, we start like, we lose our virginity to each other. And I know that it's not right because in the Bible it says that you're supposed to marry. You know what I mean? Um, and so I feel like I need to marry this girl. And so she turns 18 in February. My birthday's in January, mm-hmm. the big ordeal. We get back together. Her birthday's in February. She turns 18. My dad's an ordained pastor. February, March, April, May. I get the bright idea. Let's go get married. Okay. My dad's a pastor, an ordained pastor. <laughs> so we're there at my house, like sneak it off at my apartment. So your dad was the only one that knew? Yeah. So so my parents knew that I wanted to get married and they were down for it. So we brought her parents over and we had a meeting with all four of them. And I told them, hey, we're getting married tomorrow at the courthouse. My dad's doing the wedding. He's an ordained pastor. You guys are either going to be there or you're not. And uh, we don't want any of your family there, just the grandparents. Mm-hmm. And so we got married the next day. Did they pull up? They pulled up, and the dad was pissed. <laughs> Shout out, Jerry. Bro, his, he's pissed in the photos. Okay. He is furious. I'm glad I said the grandparents, though, because her mom's grandpa, who was so nice to me, he actually passed away. A while after that. So it was cool that he got to see his granddaughter yeah, get married. Yeah. But so then we're married. We move in together. We get a two bedroom apartment in the apartment complex. So now you got a new spot. YouTube money is getting better. How big are you now? 200, 300K. Okay. 300,000 subs, 200,000 subs, somewhere around there. Yeah. And you. Um, probably at like this 200, point, probably like 200. At this point, you have been doing it for what? Four or five years? Full time. Yeah, like three or four. Or oh yeah, full time. Full time. 
from uh, originally messing around to that point right there. Right, right. And uh, we, we had conversations too in the past about like your struggle, like you had a hump you had to get over creatively, at least for your channel growth. What do you mean? I remember you were saying you had like, Around three hundred thousand subscribers, you were yeah, like yeah, stuck yeah. for right. a while. Right, right, like, right, right, right. Growth was slow. Yeah, that's a little bit later, I think, because I wasn't at three hundred at this point. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that for okay. sure. But okay. I remember like my first like when I started when it started banging. So at this apartment, this is when we actually started getting traction. And at that point, I specifically remember I joined like this YouTube Guru program, mm-hmm. and it was like teaching us like, don't just do your niche like. Do your niche, but add a twist to it. Find where you lie in the niche. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, I do sneakers. There's the guys who do the sneaker reviews. They're going to do it better than me. Right. doesn't really interest me. I tried it and it didn't work. But if I can mix comedy with shoes, Mm -hmm. then that's like a goldmine. So I start doing things like wearing size 18 sneakers to the mall. Mm -hmm. Banger. Blew up. Mm Mm-hmm. I did wearing rags to the Louis Vuitton store. Mm-hmm. Banger. Blew up. I did... Um, Beth did a prank on me where she was like selling my sneakers as a garage sale for $1, my sneaker collection. Mm-hmm. That video. Banger. Like you're seeing the views come in per hour. Like it doesn't look real because right. it's like blowing up, bro. Okay. Um my boy Sneaker Talk does a video and it's like wearing fake Yeezys to the to the Adidas store. Mm-hmm. And I see this video and I'm like, how can we do this? Um, so I do wearing, so I go, I get like a like a print on shirt and I iron on Louis Vuitton and I do wearing fake Louis Vuitton to so the Louis Vuitton store, sneaking in there in mm-hmm. San Antonio, mm-hmm. filming it, blows up. Uh, I do. What was your like creative process during that time? At that time, I'm like, I just need to be making the most viral videos that I can, and I need to just blow up on YouTube and get to a mill. Okay, so really it's like more of, because I'm in the stage right now, I got a few hundred thousand subs, and I'm more like, I'm worried about the core audience. I'm making stuff for my, my right. people. So the and moment like, that, that's not what gets the views. The moment that my YouTube career changed forever is a manager told me. Sorry to interrupt the podcast, but I had a quick question. Are you guys interested in taking your shoe game to another level, but you just don't know where to start? I built a full program just for somebody like you, the Six Figure Sneakerhead. It's an eight week program that takes you through all the steps that you need to know. We have a full community where you can engage with everybody else that's going through the same program as you, have monthly live meetups where you can connect with me and other members on the inside, and we set goals for each other and hold each other accountable. Also, we give away a free pair of shoes every single month with different challenges if this is something that's for you or you're looking to take your game to the next level or even flip your sneakers to turn that into real estate this is the place where you need to be i can help you with finding loans and remodeling properties and getting yourself on the right path to become a millionaire if that's something that you desire if this sounds like something for you hit the link down below in the description and get signed up today this is more than just sneakers i want to see people grow and succeed in all aspects of life let's get back to the podcast he said you need to stop making videos for the sneaker community Mm -hmm. and you need to make videos for people that love sneakers. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like stop making videos that only the sneaker community can watch and make videos that the sneaker community can watch and the whole public that like sneakers. So that changed my career forever. And that was around that time that I started doing all that crazy stuff. And then me and Beth were married and we're in the apartment, and there's still highs and lows. Like, it's not, like, all good, crazy money coming in. We're not even probably making that much. We're making, like, 3000 3500 a month. Okay. Um, but this is, like, 10 years ago. And I'm 18. Right. So it's getting, it's getting there. That's solid. It's getting there. And then we meet these other YouTubers in SA, and we all go to VidCon. Mm-hmm. And I'm 18, so this is seven years ago. So we're in 2023. So it's VidCon 2016. Okay. And bro, my life literally like changed after that trip. That's funny because my first experience with VidCon, like I had already been doing it for a couple of years, but that was definitely one thing I noticed when I first started getting into YouTube was like, oh, I need to be at VidCon. Like 
I don't, I didn't go because I didn't, I realized I had a past experience with like the sneaker industry and events and sports and pro athletes. Right. So like I was able to understand like, I'm not ready to go for this yet, but right. what I do, I'm already optimized. Yeah. It. And, and the thing is VidCon was so different back then. So yeah. I had the connections. I had that management, the MCM, mm -hmm. the MCN that gave me access to the hotel. So at VidCon, right. there was the VidCon. Thing. Right. Nobody goes to VidCon as a creator. You only go to VidCon if you're doing a meet and greet, and you're there for like an hour. Mm -hmm. When you're not at VidCon, you're at the hotel. Exactly. At the hotel, that's where the brands throw the events. I mean, you know now. Yeah. I'm explaining to them where the brands throw the events, where all the YouTubers hang out. Back then, it was like 10 times what it is now. So you're going in there. And keep in mind, I'm a kid who was raised off this. We didn't have cable. Wait, was, so was that your first time in LA? 2016. For VidCon? For VidCon. Okay. So, and it wasn't even LA, it was Anaheim. Anaheim, right. But then, but then, so I go to LA and I'm eight and I'm 19, Beth's 18. And we go to the Studio 71 Lounge and Wolfie Raps is there. And I grew up with all this. Everybody that I had ever watched since I was young was there. <laughs> like, I met Christopher London. Um,. I met all the OG YouTubers. Smosh was there. Smosh, which was the number one YouTuber at a time. Like, bro, it was like going into somewhere and you are like, all you watch is NBA your whole life and every NBA superstar is in one moment. No, for with you. sure. That's definitely a good example of like and what VidCon is like. So at this moment, uh, Beth is like, I don't know who any of these people are because like I'm raised on this. I know so everybody. So she went with you. She went with me. Okay. She's like, I don't know who these people are. All of a sudden, she turns around. Team Ten walks in. Team Ten. Tell she them who goes, Team oh, Ten was. She goes, "Oh shoot!" Tell them who Team, team is. Ten is when Jake Paul and Logan Paul were single-handedly taking over the internet yep. with the daily vlog. It was everything everybody was watching yep. before Mr. Beast, before everything. So this, this, you said 2016. This is right? their prime. 2016. This right? is their prime. Prime, bro. quote unquote. <laughs> this is uh, this is like Jake and Logan Paul. People were at VidCon wearing backpacks. Playing Logan songs. <laughs> Everybody's a Logan Paul. Either you're a Logan gangster oh, or you're. Because they were doing the uh, bro, the little rap beef stuff. You have no idea but, bro, how bro, bro. crazy. This was 2016, right? Okay, so I sparked like my like interest in YouTube at the end of 2017. Okay. So I had just like started to see like who casey neistat was right who jake paul and logan paul is like all these people mm -hmm. so like when 2018 rolled around it was like that was the year i was like starting to like watch youtube more right and, like get back into right. it so i had seen like all that stuff yeah. that you were like you were living around. in the prime you of just it, saw it but i was it like, was like your first taste of youtube catching the like aftermath of it a little bit okay like because okay. i think the clout house that just came Cloud house or rice like gum banks all those guys yeah yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. that's what was like popping like Peter right. mckinnon just came on the scene like <laughs> Yeah. It was like stuff like that. Yeah, so, Peter McKinnon was on a completely other spectrum, but yeah, he was on well, the Well, yeah, yeah, you know me, I watched yeah. different stuff. But that was like, okay, so this was when LA was literally at its prime, bro. Facts. Everybody was like on Fairfax. GTA 5. So then I'm going to LA. I'm seeing Team 10. We get invited to the Studio 71 party. Okay. I am a Studio 7. I'm signed to Studio 71. Okay. Everybody. It's like a line all around the whole shopping center. It was at the House of Blues in Anaheim. and Oh, yeah. Over there. They, we, they did a party there a couple years ago. Bro, there is like Booming. everybody that is everybody, the hottest club you can ever imagine. There's like 700 people in line, all mm -hmm. YouTubers. Mm -hmm. Yep, the top I get the in top there, bro. Creators. I get in there, bro. I'm meeting Cash Nasty. I'm meeting Flight Reacts. I'm meeting DDG for the first time. Like we're both, we're both eight, like 19 years old. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm meeting Wolfie and his crew. Bro, I get VIP access because I'm a Studio 71 to the top floor of the VIP level. Up top, yeah. Yep. I see Logan at the party. I take a video with him and take a picture, all that. And I go to the top and uh, it's like an overlooking of the club. Yeah, yeah. So there's like seats. Yeah, it's got like a few, yeah. there's like a couple of seats lined up and right. then there's like a little section and sometimes there's like right. little booths up there. Right. I went to the party a couple of years ago. Yeah. I don't so, know exactly what you're talking about. I'm sitting there overlooking the party. 
realizing how crazy my life just went from zero to 100. I went from making videos at Ross in the south side of San Antonio to being around the hottest superstars on the planet. You're like having this moment. And it's 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 not even like they're not like Justin Bieber, but this is everything I am consumed with. Right. Your world is this is a huge thing in your world. So then Logan comes and Logan just sits right here mm -hmm. with his girl mm -hmm. at the time. But at the time, too. He was big, but nowhere near as big as he is now. He was like blowing up at that time. He was, it's weird. He was bigger in the YouTube space, but he's not big internationally. Cause because like at that subs, time, at that time he was, like, at that time he was shutting down the Dubai mall. Yeah. But how many subs did they have? Like five, seven mil? Like 20 mil or something. But like they, they were pulling, bro, they were time? pulling like 10 to 20 mil every video, every day. They were cooking. Every Either day. way they were cooking. I remember that. So anyways, for me, it's the biggest YouTuber in the world. Mm -hmm. Sitting right behind, behind me, bro. At that moment, you know, I just didn't feel like my life was real anymore. It wasn't going to, from that moment on, my life will not be a normal life anymore. You just knew, like, this I just is knew different. this was it. Yeah, it's fun. I like it. It's interesting. And sure. so, and so then I'm going, and everything that I fantasized about since I was in middle school, the mecca of all meccas, I go to Fairfax Street. Mm -hmm. I see Supreme, I see Diamond Supply. Uh, Nikki Diamonds is there. Flight Club was there. I end up on a, a Nike documentary about Diamond Supply, about oh, Nikki fire. Diamonds. Um, I go to the hundreds. I go to Flight Club. My mind is just blown, bro. We go to the Team 10 house, which was near Fairfax, like two streets down. Um, oh, damn. They were that close? Kids are outside, bro. Like, like 15, 20 kids are outside, like waiting for them to come out. Um... Dude, I go home to back to San Antonio, and I'm like, L.A., L.A., L.A. is where I need to be. Right. So then we take a road trip because me and Beth can't drive at the time. We can't rent a car at the time because we're not 25. We're 18 and 19. Right. And her mom comes with us because we're so young. So we literally drive all the way to L.A. nonstop. 20 hours. We're oh switching. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and we get, a, we get an Airbnb. It was like a... It was like a a loft right off Hollywood Boulevard, which is the craziest part ever. Wait, is this the road trip that you were talking about when you went to Red Lobster? No, this was like that was like way before. That was like when I first got on YouTube money. Tell, way tell, past that. tell us about that. All right, one real so quick. so when I first got YouTube money, you know, when me and Beth are dating, uh, I'm still living with my mom. I got my, I got a brand new. It wasn't the brand new that got my rent, but like growing up. My parents could never take us to Red Lobster or Olive Garden because it was way too expensive. So there was a moment where we're driving back from somebody's house and we're on the highway and we see a Red Lobster. And I had gotten paid like $300 for my brand deal that day. So I'm like, we can literally, if we wanted to, I tell Beth, go in and sit down and eat at Red Lobster. She's like, yeah, we could. She thinks nothing of it. I exit the highway and I turn around. And I go to Red Lobster and I said, we're going to eat at Red Lobster. Mm -hmm. And a kid having no money growing up on like the, you know, poor, one of the poorest sides of town. Like we could eat at Red Lobster now. It was massive for me. It was massive. And then I remember like the first time I had my first place. And I was like, I wish I had a TV in my room. Mm -hmm. And I had the bread to just drive to Walmart. And go buy a flat screen TV. I didn't need to save for months. Mm -hmm. At 18. Those two moments. So anyways. It just. The impact was just insane. Crazy. Um, so you're on a road trip back to LA. So going you're to like, LA. I gotta go back to LA ASAP. <laughs> and I'm in LA for a week. We're in like the worst part. Which is like a ride off Hollywood Boulevard. And it's crazy. And there's homeless. And I'm scared. And I'm going to the Supreme store. And I'm filming wearing fake Supreme to us to the Supreme store, which is a banger, by the way, three mil. Um, and like, you said, work war fake Supreme to, to the, the Supreme, Supreme store? store to a Supreme drop. <laughs> Dudes are like trying to buy the Supreme off me, and no. like, and like brands hear that I'm there, so I'm going to like brand offices, and I'm doing a studio tour. Uh, I'm doing the office tour of Studio Seventy One in Beverly Hills, and seeing like all the movies they they pro, they did and like all the deals they did with like epic meal time and like smosh and like mm -hmm. logan paul was signed with them so i'm like really 
we're there for a week and and but it's just so scary bro like la is so crazy you're talking about like texas small town to like this wild homeless or screaming and freaking people are like robbing each other and like i'm 18 and 19 and then beth's mom flies home and we're there and we're just like by ourselves we don't know anybody right except for the guy that works for studio 71 Mm -hmm. the manager or whatever were you guys staying at a hotel we were staying at airbnb airbnb in hollywood okay um and i was like let's just go home i was just so like scared bro like, I was so scared. And it was just, like, so much, dude. It was just so much. So then we go back to Texas, and we're like, okay, you know, we had our time with L.A., but, like, what's next? So then at that time, <clears throat> we're making, like, 4000 a month, and <clears throat> I'm still doing the comedy bits, and we're doing, like, crazy videos. We're, like, getting NMDs, and we're making them, like, Gucci NMD customs, mm-hmm. and, like, we're, like, painting, like, Gucci, and doing, like, off-the-wall stuff, like, crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. That's so what I'm saying. That's like, what I'm saying. I was really never in the sneaker community. Right. I was just like, did videos about sneakers, but like, I was just crazy. Doing random stuff. So basically, it was like, what can I do the craziest stuff around sneakers? I was sneakers? just viral. Right. I was just a viral guy. Right. Uh, yeah. And so, so then, dude, like, we ended up moving into like, you've seen the Tower of Americas? The what? The Tower of America in San Antonio, the big tower. It's like a big. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we moved to these condos. Um, penthouse like not, not a penthouse but like these condos floor to ceiling windows hottest spot in the city our view right outside is the tower of america just spinning in all this city overlooking mm-hmm. we were on floor 32 we took an elevator up there was valet service there was a concierge you like i'm a big youtuber now Bro, i'm doing my thing I at got that my point <laughs> at that point i was like on top of the world bro but i was still so hungry for that yeah. I was still so hungry for that mill. So then at that spot, we hit 300, 400. And so I think when I was making videos of, but just about shoes, that's when I was stuck. And then when I found out like entertainment mixed with shoes, that's when I got exposed to a bigger audience, mm-hmm. like a more viral audience. So you think the biggest point you would say is definitely like. That's the biggest turning point in my YouTube the career. That's the biggest point in my content. YouTube career for sure. Yeah. Um, Cause yeah, so then we're we're out there, but then like, bro, I still feel like LA is calling. Mm-hmm. So then, at this time, I'm meeting all these managers, and I meet Fousey Tube's old manager somewhere along the line. Okay. So we go back to LA to visit, and no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We didn't go back to LA to visit. We meet the manager, and we're talking about signing, and so we go to LA. We're staying in an Airbnb, and I meet up with uh, Fuzzy Tube's old manager, mm-hmm. and which is my boy to this day, and um, he tells us Fuzzy's old building, mm-hmm. and he's like, "You guys should live there." So then we we move all of our stuff from Texas. No, 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 no. We drive out there. Uh, we still we're still paying for the condo monthly. Okay. But we're like, let's go get the place and then we'll drive back and bring all of our stuff. Okay. So we're searching for a place. So we go and it's like, it's like Wilshire, La Brea, which if you know about that area, it's like mid city. But like those apartments still have heavy construction to this day. There's crazy people all the time. The roads are screwed up Mm -hmm. and it's just like not a good area. Mm -hmm. So I go over there and we move to LA. Finally, the dream, we move to LA and it is so stressful i have so much anxiety like i'm just so scared and just Mm -hmm. the videos at this time were hitting big numbers i was doing like 500 hundred dollar nike challenge and Mm -hmm. like nike outlet challenge and they were like climbing to like a mill and like everything's doing great i moved to la and i don't even know what to film because i don't know what is around i don't know like the people are kind of different than texas they're not as nice so like filming there like louis vuitton's like shutting us down like no you can't film in here and like the ross is like sketch like we're filming the ross videos in there and there's like weirdos in there that are like homeless people and like bad people crazy people we buy a mattress we're at that apartment for three weeks mm-hmm. and I broke my and I'm like I don't know what to film the views are just not doing good in LA 
So then I just break my lease and I move back to the condo that we still have <clears throat> so in Texas. So lease never got rid of that spot, though. Yeah, but at that time, like, bro, I was lit. Like, before I moved to L.A., I was shooting music videos. We were doing music you videos. Shot a music video? We were doing parodies. We were doing like high beats, and they call me and the Louis and Supreme. Like to where uh, is this Kiki, video at? Do you look? It's still on. It's uh, still on your page. Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. I have to find. Uh, this. I have a bunch of music videos, bro, that I did back in the day, and we would film them in Foot Locker, and I would do it. So I became friends with like the whole Foot Locker staff. <laughs> we would be filming pranks in Foot Locker. We'd be filming challenges. Oh, I'm Millie, Texas. Millie, 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 yeah. Millie. Um. My boys are filming for me. We're crushing. We're doing every other day. Um, and then, so I go to LA and, dude, I'm thinking about all my boys being in SA and they're, my filmers there and my boys that are in my videos are there and the full lockers there and everything's great. Mm -hmm. So then we move back and then we end up just going 10 times harder, filming every other day videos. So bangers. you hadn't hit a mil yet? Hadn't hit a mil. Okay. End up, Going with my boys on a cruise in the summer. Videos are banging. Oh, sorry. Before that, before before right before I hit a mill, I'm like 900,000 subscribers in the condo, which was crazy. That condo was, dude, I was like breathing in and out YouTube. Mm. Like I was not doing the ministry anymore at church because um, I decided to take the time off to focus on my career. I was not going to the gym. I had was really fat. I was breathing in and out YouTube. So you just became obsessed, obsessed insane at what YouTube. Like insane to like another level, bro. In that condo, we went from like 250,000 subs to over, over a mil in that condo. So, okay. What, so, were, what do you say was the key? I just, I just kept consistent, entertaining videos every other day banger ideas so you were dropping a lot of videos every other day consistently coming with viral content crazy viral it was like or concept it was like we're gonna make a fake supreme bike and then we're gonna like take it to the pawn shop and then like another video was like trying to buy um air jordan ones with only one dollar bills like mm -hmm, off the wall mm -hmm. stuff that like the sneaker people never would ever think of i was like in my own freaking road bro where was you coming up like how was you Bro, I was just being as creative as I could be. Like what it was, was your like creative process though. Like what would you do to a be lot creative? of the a lot of the stuff was like what are the other YouTubers outside of sneakers doing? That's the, that's the thing that I feel like a lot of people trip over mm -hmm. uh, trip up over is in my career after my manager made that comment to me, I never looked at the sneaker people anymore. Right. After that, it's funny because I don't really watch that much sneaker YouTube. Either. I never watch the sneaker <laughs> people. I was watching, I'm watching stuff bro, about like finance. Real I was estate, watching other right, stuff, like. but I was watching like what is Ricecom doing? What are what is Wolfie doing? What are mm. these viral people doing? And how can I make it into sneakers? Mm -hmm. So then there was a video where Mr. Beast had like bought a car full of pennies at the time and mm -hmm. it was like viral he wasn't even mr beast yet it was uh, just viral. he had the uh yeah he had the wheelbarrow so I, I remember went, that i remember that i went and like the travis scott ones dropped and they were 800 bucks so i got 800 dollars worth of pennies pulled up in a wheelbarrow to a sneaker store and bought the travis in pennies <laughs> like that kind of stuff nobody was doing nobody right. like i was in my own lane i wasn't a rich kid right. i didn't have all the hottest shoes but the creativity and the entertainment and the personality and the comedy in it right. really really set me apart so i was on the road to becoming like one of these legends bro like realistically like you know i was on the road to like so what really really i feel like was the the really big breaking point of it was like me and my boy sneaker talk he was another youtuber from canada that would do shoes and we it was kind of like me and you where we just go out and film and we decided to take a trip to asia mm -hmm. so we went to the philippines we went to japan mm -hmm. and we went to singapore mm -hmm. and after that trip like all the like fans from asia came and subscribed so then after the summertime hits and i'm with my two boys and they're like working for me at the time, so I pay for their cruise, and we all get on a cruise, and I end up hitting the cruise ship is in the middle of the ocean, mm -hmm. and we have Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. I'm about to hit a mill in the middle of the ocean on a cruise ship. Fire. We get, get go on live stream. We get the champagne bottle. Um, you still got that video? Yeah, it's a live stream on my it's channel. It's on your channel. Still? It's on my channel, bro. I have to dig deep into so your it's me, and Beth, and my two boys, and. We're there, and you know they start unsubbing and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. like, bro, 
I ended up hitting a meal. We popped the champagne bottle, bro. Life is good, dude. Like, life is way too good, bro. Everything that I had worked for my entire life had paid off at that moment. So, how many years? So, at this point, I think I'm like, at this point, I think I'm like 20. So, that was like I started when I was 11. So, that's nine years. So, you had been doing YouTube for nine years before you got to a million subscribers. Yeah. So, Beth is 19. I'm 20 at this time. We're in the condo. And I'm like, I got to go back to LA when I hit a mill. Mm. So, we moved back to LA. Glendale this time. And the crazy part is, bro, this time, I'm... The videos are going even crazier. So what year was this? Twenty. I'm twenty, so this was five years ago. So this was twenty twenty eighteen. Yeah. Okay. So this is when I was starting to get into YouTube. Okay. Yeah. So I had seen you before, and then that's when. Remember the next year when I had hit you, or no? This is that was later. Before. That was that later. Was that was later. later. That was. I think you hit me during COVID. During so that COVID was twenty twenty. Yeah, so yeah. that was two years later. Okay. So but two years I later. had seen you. When I was doing my research on sneaker creators and stuff. Right. Because I remember seeing you doing a thing where, like, somebody was, like, creasing up your shoes in your room or something like that. And you came in and you were all pissed and everything. And I was like... Oh, yeah, yeah. That was during COVID. That was my sister. Was that during COVID, too? Yeah, that was Sarah. Yeah, Okay, so maybe I was a little bit after then. That was during COVID. Twenty, might have been... Yeah, 2020, I think, is when you you found me. But 2020 was my first, like, full year. Yeah. Yeah. Your first full year during COVID. That's crazy. COVID was the hardest time for me. Yeah. So, okay. We're getting there though. So the momentum is building. I am making way more money than a doctor. Which is how much? <laughs> you want to know? Yeah. Uh, dog. I think at that time I'm making like, should I say it? At that time yeah. I'm making like, in just AdSense alone, I'm making like 40, 50K a month. Okay. So that's <laughs> and solid. I'm 20 years old. You just hit a meal? I'm 20 years old, bro. At that time, it was 10-minute videos, not 8-minute videos. Yes, and I'm still dropping every other day, but I'm doing even crazier ideas because now I have bread. So I I start doing the challenges, and Mm -hmm. I'm still taking from YouTube, and I'm putting the sneaker. So it's like, guess the, and I'll buy it for you. So I'm going to Cool Kicks. I'm like, guess the sneakers, I'll buy it for you. 3 million views. Part 2, two mil- like 3 million views again. Part two, like I'm collabing with YouTubers out there, bro. I'm doing the thing. Mm-hmm. Everything is great mm-hmm. on a work standpoint. Right. From a living standpoint, I don't have any of my homies. I don't have any of my family. I'm getting all the work done. I start getting into this weird depression. And you're never still like before. gaining weight and everything. No. At that point, when I moved to L.A., I realized I needed to stop gaining weight. So I started eating healthier. We were working out at the Equinox. Mm-hmm. Um, we ordered a Tesla. Okay. We had the hottest place in Glendale with a ma- penthouse, massive balcony overlooking all the mountains. We had the so most you're expensive just living it up like in the a, building. A, a million subscriber YouTuber would be living. But it I up. was like grinding. Right. But hard. what comes at is a lot of sacrifice, right? Yeah. So then. So, so you then. Have to like, what what was but you that's lacking? all I'm doing. That's Besides literally all I'm doing. You think that made you like you said go into that depression? Friendships, like, family. I'm flying back to SA like as much as I can because I miss everybody. Okay. Um, and then I start getting into um, so I start getting into like prank content, mm-hmm. like public pranks. So then I hit, dude. I'm, I start doing breaking iPhones, which is like having to do with iPhone, mm-hmm. not even sneakers. Mm-hmm. So I did stepping on shoes because I saw another YouTuber did it. That mm-hmm. wasn't even, it was like a skater. Mm-hmm. So I did stepping on sneakers and then buying them new ones. So I was like, what else can I do that's similar to this? Some guy did cutting people's headphones and giving them AirPods. Oh yeah, I remember everybody was doing so that. So I did breaking people's iPhone, iPhone, iPhone and giving them the new iPhone 10 that had just dropped. Six million views filmed in Glendale, California. Mm-hmm. Um, and Is that I, like your biggest video at the time? At the time. That's my top video. Okay. Pranks are going crazy for me. Entertainment, sneaker pranks. But then I'm able to get out of sneakers. Okay. So you're like, I'm getting out of sneakers. Massive audience. Okay. Um, but how was your like CPMs changing? I don't even remember the CPMs at the time. Think, so I didn't. It so was changing, but I didn't notice. Uh, cause you wasn't really hip to that. Cause I was doing pranks and sneakers still. I wasn't, I didn't just give up the sneakers. Okay. But did you see your your monthly ad rev go down because of that? I didn't even care, bro. I was so young. I didn't need that much money. Right. Okay. 
So, like, you could have been making, like, 40 or 50K a month, and you might have been making, like, 35 there, or Right, 40, but it just, it's then, just like, the same for me. Like, bro, I literally was so broke all my life. But now, as an older, wise YouTuber. I wasn't wise. I was 20 years old. No, I'm talking about now. Oh, now, bro, that's... Like, you understand... That's crazy. The that's crazy. difference between... And that's why, like, I can't even understand. Jake Paul was, like, my age. Right. Making millions a month. Right. You know, like, it's crazy. Yeah. So, anyways, so... I get really sad, and I end up moving back to Texas after four months of living in L.A. You lived there for four months, and you was running it up, and you already moved back. And I moved back because I'm just depressed, bro. That's crazy. It's crazy. Um, LA, nothing, but the thing is, LA, nothing's bro. happening with for me. Like It's yeah. just YouTube. So I'm like, bro, I could be doing the same thing at home. Right. Because I was. So then I go home, and I cop a crib. Mm-hmm. And I bought cop, a house. I bought a house. Mm-hmm. I bought a, I'm living with my mom for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I buy a four bedroom house, two story, theater room, big backyard, everything. How'd that feel? Um, It felt cool. I didn't really care for it. I was like, the only reason why I bought the house is because every, all these old heads were like, you got to invest, you got to invest. I was much more of a condo person. (laughs) I didn't care. And I was making so much bread and the real estate's so cheap. I'm just like, yeah, I'll take this house. Whatever you can get the fastest. Right. So I just bought the house. Okay. Um, How much you buy the house for? It was like 280k and then you just did like a down payment on it well, it was our first house or the down payment was like also you did 1%. like percent like a three percent down payment or something yeah okay oh yeah so you could like oh i thought you 15 so real quick. <laughs> everything starts elevating with the homies at this point mm-hmm. i'm back with all my boys okay it feels great i'm doing pranks now okay every video i'm doing every prank video is hitting like between two and ten million views mm-hmm. i have a house we're getting lit in the house. Everything is great. We go on another cruise for my 21st birthday. Okay. Is this like you're taking everybody on the cruise? Or yes. like your homies is going with you? No, I'm paying, paying for everybody. So I'm paying for like seven of them, except for Sneaker Talk, pay for his own. Like, where's the cruise out of? What city? Houston. So we're driving four hours to Houston. Oh, so you drive there. Galveston, and then we take off to Mexico or wherever. Okay, so you're so life for is bro. Life okay. is great at this point. Okay. That's when Drake's song came out. Working on the weekend as usual. Right, right, right. You know what I mean. Right. Life is good. Right. Everything is great. I am the most egotistical mother effer ever. Right. I literally have on that cruise for my twenty first birthday. Right. I made the nastiest comments that I will ever make to anybody. That I will never talk like this again to people. My head was massive. I just moved back from LA. I lived in LA. I'm making stupid money than anybody my age could even imagine. Right, right, right. I'm 20 years, 21 years old. I just turned 21 years old. Mm-hmm. We come back from that cruise. My birthday's in January 22nd. We come back from that cruise in February. Mm-hmm. 2020. Everybody starts making jokes. Oh, did y'all catch the coronavirus out there? Right. I'm like, what are you talking about? What are you, whatever. Right. I can't film no more pranks. We go into lockdown. Oh, yeah, because you were filming public pranks, and now you can't because everybody's locked I'm done down. with shoes. It's only pranks. And you hadn't been doing shoe videos for a while. I hadn't been doing shoe videos for like a year. Oh, okay. So now you have built this audience. You created a new audience, right? <clears throat> you kind of got like, how many subs did you have at that time? Like 1.5, 1.2? Like 1.5, yeah, 1.2. Okay, so you've cultivated an audience and then structured a new audience that is now paying attention to your stuff but you just like lost the audience yep so then covid hits i can't film anything everybody's in lockdown you can't step outside i'm going crazy bro like i'm literally going crazy i fly back to la with my boys peak covid we're the only ones on the flight because i'm like bro i gotta film 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 film bits in la go back to texas this is like when i started like covid's YouTube. getting worse covid's getting worse um and i'm just at the bottom of the world at this point everything's just flatlined everything's like going down quick all the views yep i learn about i i'm trying to figure out how i could pick it up i learn about daryl eves okay i join his program okay um i'm don't know what to do i don't know what to do i'm running four channels during before the daryl thing 
I'm running four channels at this point, trying to see what sticks to the wall. Daily gaming videos, daily reaction videos, daily family channel videos, daily. and daily, or not daily, uh, main channel videos, but like weekly sneaker, or pranks. Oh my gosh. Four That's channels, crazy. three channels are daily, and TikTok, because TikTok was new to the scene. So I'm just like BSing on TikTok. I'm like, whatever. I, I get that. 500K in like one week from TikTok. Right. But it's like, bro, YouTube's my bread and butter. Mm -hmm. So nothing's working at all. And we are had a savings account of a lot of money, but it's going down because we have nothing coming in. Mm. So uh, we bought a Tesla. We bought the house, you know. And so I joined Daryl's program. And we're in it for a couple months, and nothing's picking up, nothing's picking up, nothing's picking up. And then I decide to try anything. So I'm like, let me film a sneaker collection video, see if it just does good. And then I film a sneaker collection video to just touch the water of maybe getting back into shoes. And that's where I stole your thumbnail. Mm -hmm. It was legit Tim's sneaker collection video. <laughs> and I was at my lowest point. And I didn't have a I, – I photoshopped, like, a bunch of Air Mags in my hand. And then I researched, like, a random sneaker wall. Yeah. And we used your sneaker wall. Yeah. And then that caught your attention, which hit me up, which how we got connected originally on so, IG. All right. At this time, like you said, you were a part of Daryl's thing. I went to Vid Summit in 2019 – that was later though. That was way later. You're in skipping. October. No, I'm 2019. saying. 2019. Oh yeah, I didn't go in 2019. Right. I went in 2019. Okay. Okay. I had I had just got like established of like I'm gonna do to I'm gonna do you. Right. I had known who Daryl was for a while, was but around, I just like, never. I had yeah. like I don't know. Was messing around for like the year before or something. Had like 10,000 subs. So I was like, I'm gonna do YouTube. <clears throat> go to an event. I go from 10,000. At the end of October to thirty thousand on New Year's. Then I went from thirty thousand to a hundred thousand by from New Year's to November. So I went like basically I grew a hundred thousand subs in under a That's year. That's fire. That's right? fire. Yeah. So during that time, you're going through the struggle. This is I'm just pointing painting the but picture. But this is twenty twenty, twenty one. Right. So then twenty twenty one comes. I'm now establishing myself on YouTube. Yep. And I'm seeing what? Oh, this is what happens when you're a smaller creator. People take your stuff. Mm. They take your idea. They take your. I just looked it up thing. on Google or something. No, I don't know, no, but... no, no. I get it. But you, you know the same thing. <laughs> I'm like, like trying to defend myself. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you know how it goes. It's a right. part of the game. You feel like, offended. You're like, dude, what the heck? Yeah, like I'm trying. Like this to be guy's creative. a massive I'm YouTuber. I'm trying to do something different. I'm trying to show my uniqueness. Right. right? And then somebody else goes does the same thing or whatever. Right. And then again. There's not, like, who is truly original, right? Like, everything comes from something. I get that as well. But when you're a small creator trying to get to a million subscribers, trying to do those things, it does suck. It hurts. Right. It stings. It feels like, right? right? So, for me, I had saw his thumbnail, and I'm like, bro, that's my whole shoe wall in yeah. the background. Yeah. Like, what the hell? So, I sent the photo of him, and then I sent the picture of my wall on my Instagram to confirm like it was my photo to him on DM and I was like, yo, this is my wall or something. <laughs> but you were cool about it. You weren't yeah. like hey, you're on pissed or anything. I was like, man, at least like let's collect like let's yeah. work on something or something. You know what I'm saying? Like Right. And that's when I was like completely out of the shoe community. Right. I hadn't been in it for like two years. So I'm like a new I didn't know on any up and comers. I hadn't been watching had it. Never I hadn't known. been looking. Exactly. Um and I still was into shoes, but like at that point, like I could, I had already bought everything I wanted. Right. Um, but you know what's funny? The 2019 Vid Summit, I did pull up to. Oh, you did go? I did pull up to it with my sister. They flew into LA because we, we were living in Glendale. Mm -hmm. And this was when uh, me, Ryan Trahan, and Tyler Olivera were like around the same size what? on YouTube. I met them at the same time. We were at the same time on YouTube. Were you? And we did literally. Did you go to Vid Summit? Yeah, I went for one day. You weren't like in the back, like when they were all cracking jokes, like the first day. When, no, and then we all walked to subway no, no, together. No, 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 no. Because I'm thinking, like, no. if you was a part of that group, I was. Bro, I literally, I was, that's that's all, all the people I met when I started on YouTube. DJ, you like, got to realize I was so cocky and prideful at that point. Like, I sat with Ryan and Tyler for one single speech because I knew Tyler because he did like GameStop I think they videos. Had 
just hit a mil or something like that. Yeah, so I'm at like one mil too. So I'm at right. on like the same size as them. Yeah, I remember there was like a so, little clique of people. Like, so Tyler Tyler uh, had done GameStop videos. I was doing GameStop videos, and but mine were like absolutely crushing. Mm -hmm. uh, so we link. We have phone calls. We're cool. So then I see my vid summit. I meet Ryan for the first time. I don't know who Ryan is. Oh, I met Ryan actually at VidCon, but in the gym real quick. Uh, so I'm sitting with them for one talk, dude. Just hold, on, one hold on, hold on, hold on, bro. Me. For people that don't know, Ryan Trahan is now taking over the internet, killing it. How many subs does he have now? <sighs> dude, like 13, 15 mil, mil or something. 15 mil, mil. Yeah, yeah. I don't He's know. He's amazing. Ryan's he literally a great. went from Ryan's like a, a million subs to like 10 million subs right. like in a couple years, just over these past couple years. Yep. He's been crushing. Tyler's just destroying right now. Tyler's getting two to three Tyler vids a video. Has been redoing his stuff and he's killing it right Crushing now. Crushing it. My boy Pasha works for him. Or yep, he works yep. with him. Yeah, yeah. Both of them so, are killing it. They're still great people, but they're very analytical. They're very looking at the analytics and into data. That's my and stuff. And what is a CPM? And I'm just over here living in LA looking at them and I'm like, do your thing, bro. And I'm just like, Watching the talk, we I did, oh stayed for one talk. Right, I was like I'm out. Right, and I didn't come back. Yeah, see, I'm all about the analytics and everything. Really so then, come full circle, I'm like I need this now. <laughs> so we're in we're in COVID, and uh, I mean I'm young too, so it's like I wasn't like super cocky, but like you're young, you're making crazy money. Like no, you, you was don't cocky need to learn. And you got humble, right? For sure, I did get humble. God humbled me for sure. So I um I needed an answer to pay my bills and stuff so i joined daryl's program and i'm doing his method with the pranks kind of trying to do what i can but it's really not really working mm -hmm. and then i get back into shoes mm -hmm. and i see traction and i see comments and they're like this is the tim we've been waiting for this is the tim we miss and then, like, everything starts gaining momentum again, momentum, momentum. Like, this is so good. So I'm living in my house two years. I can pay the rent. But I'm at this point, I'm, like, at rock bottom. And I'm starting to come up. So what I did is I literally was, like, I was doing the family channel at the time. Mm -hmm. we, I mentioned the family. The family channel was a little bit successful. It was over 100K. Okay. Because um, when I was crushing it, I was started doing that. And then I was, it was at, like, 150K. I move into with my mom full time at that time, and I turn her garage into my bedroom. Okay. One because I wanted to do the family channel full time to try to see if it works with Beth, with Beth and my siblings. Okay. And we had dogs, she so was I with move it. in she with dogs. Like, F it, we're she's doing with it. it, and she's a real one. Damn. So we turn the garage How'd into you a room. Her to do that, she loves my sisters, bro. She loves being around them, so okay. she loved being there. Okay. So we move into my mom's garage and. Uh, we are, I'm trying to do the family channel and then I'm slowly coming up with the shoe stuff. But like, but I remember I was literally like this, this moment too. I never want to get to this point again and I will do whatever I can. So I don't have to, I never look at the finances. I never have in the whole relationship with Beth. When we were at our highest, I never looked at our bank account ever, anything. I was just always creating. And I told Beth, I need to order all these shoes from DH gate to make a video. Babe, I don't think you should. What? Babe, we're starting to get views. Like, the shoe stuff is doing kind of good compared to the pranks. Mm -hmm. She's like, no, I don't think you should. And I'm like, why? And I'm like getting frustrated. And she's like, we just crossed under our last $5,000 in our account. Savings and checkings. That's it. Okay. We are at rock bottom. <laughs> we have no income coming in. Okay. We're at rock bottom, bro. I literally like became a monster, bro. I literally was in Daryl's class studying, reading his book, running five miles every single morning, even on Saturday and Sunday, studying algorithms, studying analytics, studying the graphs, looking, 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 looking. Me and Joelle are going crazy day in and day out, phone calls, hour long phone calls. How can we make this video better? How can we do the challenge? How can we do this? We're living at my mom's. It start, I breathe it. I'm consuming it. The videos start hitting a mill again. Mm -hmm. Every video, every week starts hitting a mill again. Mm -hmm. And boy, we worked our butts off and we got back up. And um, after that, I had recently taken some trips to Austin 
and we were always filming Austin when I was younger. So mm -hmm. we lived there for a year, did our thing. Channel was great, kind of, you know, still doing good. We're doing great. Um, taking trips to LA every month still. We meet up with you. We're hanging out. We start going to All-Star Weekend last year. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I'm going to LA every month. Channel's back up again. It's doing great. We're hitting millions again. We're meeting big creators. And um, this year, we moved back to LA. We've been in LA for about four or five months. Already ready to go. Doing sneaker stuff <laughs> still. Doing bangers uh, back up again. And we're here today. Yeah. So crazy, right? It's crazy. <laughs> it's funny because we go on retracking a little oh, bit. Man. We again, I was giving them shit about the whole thumbnail thing. And then there's been plenty of times throughout me and you knowing each other that I've shocked you on things and it'd be funny because you'd be like, wait, what? You you what? Huh? Yeah. It's just always funny. So I remember uh, hitting you about pulling up to Vid Summit yeah. two years ago now, right. I guess. One year and a half, whatever, I don't know. Right. Pulling up to that one uh, out in LA. And you're like, yeah, I'm going. I'm like, oh, dope. Like, let's link. And then that's where we met. Right. And then I remember we're meeting and I'm like, okay, this dude is a character. Like, I don't know how I'm going to vibe I was with wilding this guy out. yet. Like, I was wilding out, bro. I was still interested in you, but I'm like, because you know, I, I was like, it was weird though, because I was, this was when the channel was back up. Mm -hmm. Everything was doing great shoe stuff though, again. Mm -hmm. um, but I was just having the time of my life in Austin. I was just a <laughs> nut. I was a lunatic, bro. Right, right. So I'm like super hyped up on coffee. I'm like super like going out and stuff and in the gym and yeah, I, I didn't expect you to be there at all. Right. So you already you see me there and you're like, what the hell? I was and the then, only shoe guy that really crossed the line into the real other types of YouTube stuff. Like, like outside of the, the community. Right. Outside of the community. Exactly. And I wasn't used to anybody doing that. So mm -hmm. when I see you there, I just, just like freaked out. I was like, what are you doing here? Shouldn't right. you be at like sneaker con with everybody and then, else? And then I was like, yeah, this is my like third event. Or <laughs> right, event or right. And you're like, what? I'm like, yeah, bro. I was like, you like, go to other events other than sneaker con, yeah. <laughs> He was tripping for a minute. But I don't know. I think that another thing, like, you got to not only branch out with the content, but you got to branch out with and where you're learning, how you're learning, who you're learning from, not only just in that same industry, but other people right. as well that can help to that industry or maybe even a whole different industry. But, like, business and, is business. Yeah, content bro. Is content. Like, and it's crazy because literally when we met at vid summit we realized all the verticals that we had aligned so i end up running into dj like at every single event that i'm at that year because with us it's not just sneakers it's like sneakers youtube basketball so it's like that year i saw you like every month randomly because it was like places. we ran into each other at vid yeah. summit and then it was like hi <laughs> No, when I see you sneaker at the, stores, we start filming at the award a, show. We start we start filming at sneaker stores, <laughs> and then I'm still thinking like I'm still thinking like this guy's like a sneaker YouTuber, or whatever. He really doesn't know. Cool, like he was having something, but I'm, I was like, honestly, you're I don't in LA. Like, I don't like the term sneaker YouTuber at all. Okay, me. okay, okay. I'll stop I saying. I'll no, say no, that, I'm yeah. fine with it. I'm fine with it. It's not like it's going. I don't care that much, but. I just sucks that like the viewer says, "Oh, sneaker YouTuber, right?" Right. It's like, why can't you just be like a YouTuber or a creator right. or whatever? We're both out of the you community, I would say, for the most part. It's interesting how that's like how it works because. Well, I feel like sneaker YouTuber is kind of like an old term because I feel like it was like or a people bunch say of shoe tuber or whatever. But I feel like that's like, becoming an old term, bro, because that was like really like that that group of YouTubers that would like travel to SneakerCon, which is like twenty of them. Right. It was really big, like. Three or four years ago, but it's not yeah. the same. So I feel like people that were are watching this right now have no idea what we're talking about because it's yeah. kind of an old term now. At this I don't point. know. I th when I hear like the word influencer or like sneaker YouTuber, yeah, I don't like influencer YouTuber, at all. I don't like influencer at all. I don't like none of that because I'm like, we're also like, again, you're bringing joy and comedy and different things like that, and then I'm bringing joy comedy, but mainly like education and, right. and then bringing different and showing people there's other options Creating in life, creators. And stuff. So. I'm like I don't even I don't know if, I don't even know if I want to be called a creator like I don't even like that I'm like what, what's up with I don't know it's just so I gotta, me, I'm like I got to tell the story about um the streamies oh yeah so DJ is visiting LA I you're filming at Untied mm -hmm. and I'm at home mm -hmm. and 
I'm visiting LA. I'm visiting LA. I'm living in Austin. Yeah, yeah, you were visiting LA. Too. And me and Beth are there, and we get last minute wind that there's the Streamy Awards, which is like the Grammys for YouTubers. It's and like so, a big deal for, yeah, we are able to go because we didn't even get invited, but we know a lot of people in the industry. So, we got this credit card, this influencer card, and they got a table. Last minute, they were like, yo, do you want to go? So, they end up locking it down for us. So, which also, I'm a member of that same card. Right. So, but at the time, I didn't know. So, me and DJ. I didn't get invited from them. I got invited from somebody else. Me and DJ are like acquaintances at this point. Well, we're like becoming friends because we're filming together and stuff, but like we're not super tight yet. So then. And also, I'm the type that's like, if I'd have met somebody before one time for two minutes or 30 minutes and I feel like a good vibe, like I want to work with this person in the future, like I'm going to approach them like they're one of the homies. For sure. So, I'm going to be, I'm going to be like, Oh, what you doing, bro? Like, yes. let's do this or whatever. So you right? hit me and you're like, what are you doing tonight? And I'm like, oh, man, bro. Like, you're already becoming a homie. So I'm like, DJ's my homie, but also, like, I don't want to, like, how should I tell him that I'm going to be, like, going to this big award show? Like, that I'm going into this exclusive award show. Like, he's not going to be able to come. Like, I can't bring him. He's a smaller YouTuber. He's a smaller YouTuber. <laughs> And so I'm at like, that time I had like a couple hundred thousand subs. So I'm trying to explain to DJ and I'm like, hey, dude, every year they have this award show. It's for big YouTubers. It's called the Streamies. And you're like, I'm here. Where you at? And I'm like, boom. <laughs> I'm like, how? How, bro? I barely got in like last minute today by like the, like the string of my teeth. And you're like already there. <laughs> And I thought you were going to be like, yo, you want to grab some food or something? Like, bro, I was like, <laughs> that's why I, I don't you. understand why you would even assume that I was there, though, if you were there, because it's for like massive YouTubers. Well, my thought was like, you had a, over a million subs, like it's an event that people right. really go to, like right. if I'm going, like, so then, I'm sure you'll probably be pulling up. So then that's when Beth and Alexis met, because both of our wives meet at the after party. And oh, yeah, yep. we ended up like, that's when I feel like we officially locked in in his homies. Mm-hmm. And then it's like the next month after me and Joel fly to all-star weekend yeah. because we signed with new management and they give us free tickets. So then we land and you're like, yo, where you at? And I'm like, this guy, <laughs> I'm like, this guy is everywhere, <laughs> literally everywhere. And then, bro, I don't even want to... That's your place to tell them what? our stories from All-Star Weekend. But you have the craziest connections. And I'm thinking, like, this guy's just, like, a small sneaker... Smaller sneaker YouTuber. Like, sorry, you don't like the term. But, you know, he's just a smaller <laughs> YouTuber. Um, because I feel like when we think about people on YouTube, like... You, you sometimes judge them based peak, off of how many subscribers is like, they got. Right, that is, like, their peak in life. Yep. Right? So, it's, like, that's, like... YouTube is their not degree. my peak in life. <laughs> exactly. You had an entire life before you started the channel. You're right. Right. A lot this of people... Is, this is a part of my life. Right. A lot of the people and were nobodies before. They, they were nobodies and they were broke before they did YouTube. Mm-hmm. You were not. You had mm-hmm. stuff going for you. You met a bunch of people throughout your whole life. And that's something you definitely got to get into. But... I told a little bit on my uh, channel, like, how it went, like... Same thing, like the Travis right. Scott thing and like all the other stuff. I, I talked about, about All-Star Weekend? Yeah, I made a video. Bro, like, I did a pickup video, so, so I kind of went over some of the shoes I copped from the weekend. This guy is crazy. Like, literally, <laughs> the first thing we do is like, hey, bro, um, I'm working with Jordan Brand. Do you want to come to the Zion Williamson event? Right. Closed off event to the public. And yeah, you, you the only reason why you got in was because... Yes, like, yeah. yes. Jordan Brand does not know who I am or they don't care. So I'm the only guest really standing and there. Cameraman got to Zion it. Williamson is just there performing in front of a bunch of kids. Afterwards, I dab up Zion. I'm, dude, like taking pictures with him. And that was the first super crazy experience. Second crazy experience was like uh, Travi. Yeah. So we're shopping and I see Travis Scott walk into his pop-up and I, I get starstruck i don't get starstruck because we had just left his pop-up we just left his pop-up all of a sudden you see travis scott in front of me and i'm like a gust of wind just oh. all of a sudden dj just walks in to go chill with travis scott and i'm like who is this guy <laughs> like who is this dude and then bro the bro. last straw was the freaking hennessy party bro the hennessy party oh yeah that was live well okay bro so that's the thing. You know me. Like, I do a lot of cool stuff. I appreciate all the things I do. I appreciate everybody who supports me, and I'm thankful for that. 
And it's just building genuine connections with people as much as I can. Again, you can't entertain everybody or talk to everybody all the time. But I truly do care about, like, having these conversations with people, building my network and doing these things. Because, like I said, in the past, I don't know if you want to call it my past life, but, yeah, selling shoes, doing my stuff, being in the game, met a lot of people, with the brand. Athletes. I don't work with a lot of pro athletes, rappers, you name it. And I'm not here to flaunt all that stuff on right. my channel. Like, yeah, I be, like, talking about, like, my experiences. And some people see it like, oh, you trying to flex. But really, I'm just, like... That's why I made the channel. Like right. I want to share my experiences with y'all. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like yep. because I want to look back on these videos yep. and be like, I remember these times and right. now I'm making the videos. Back 100%. in the day, I wasn't making the videos. I just had the memories, a couple photos, and then we're just like you, right? You right. could tell the story and be like, Oh, he's not lying. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But again, sometimes people don't believe the stuff I'm right. telling them if I were to like really tell all these stories from the years like it just sounds people fake. just won't believe it, just it. sounds fake yeah, like yeah. how could you be the one how right. why were, why right. are you right and to me i'm like that's low-key disrespectful to me because i'm like if Facts. you don't see my hustle you don't see my Facts. grind like come but on but it's now. because you come across so humbly i feel it you didn't come across being like yo what's up bro i work with these athletes and what's up i know you're a youtuber i could probably connect you with all these people like you don't talk right you just like should do, and I'm trying to help everybody out. Like again, how do you? Because get... when you first approached me, I'm a bigger YouTuber. You literally could have said, like, you could have flexed everything you had. Because most people do, right? When you meet yeah, them, true. I'm this person. I do YouTube, but like, you know, that's that's what I'm trying to do right now. But like, bro, I know what I normally do is like, I know this person, that person, right? You know what I mean, right? But you didn't come. Yeah, across I just like let that. it come. Like I said, when everything aligns, like you see it. Like if it aligns, it makes sense then that's where I'm at. So, like, same thing with you. Like, I had met you. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, you got subscribers, all this stuff. Great. Like, but if it doesn't align, it doesn't make sense with me. It yeah. doesn't make sense. It's like, just, and at this point, bro, I'm just like, at the point where I've done it full time for like 10 years now, like, it doesn't even, the followers, the money, like, doesn't mean anything to me anymore, right. dude. It's like, and that's my biggest thing. That's why I said, again, when it comes down to like viewership on my channel and stuff that's right now, I did have a long, I don't know if you want to call it slump, but a long period where say like views may be down or whatever, but my impact was higher than well, my yeah, I think, views. I think for me, I think for me, I'm realizing, dude, that at the core, I am an artist. Mm -hmm. And I think that I appreciate the art and people enjoying the art more than the business side of it. Mm -hmm. Like for me, having those crazy ideas on YouTube mm -hmm. was my art form. Mm -hmm. And I'm at the core, I'm really not a businessman. I'm really not an entrepreneur. That's why I don't do merch. That's why I don't do all these things. But it, you guys I am to, an artist. I was just talking about this yesterday. Like you and your wife have the perfect duo. She's the integrator. Right. You're the visionary. Like, right. For sure. In any successful business, that. you put a visionary and an integrator together that both excel in that position and they know their role. It's hard to fail. Well, I feel like that's the... Because truly, I mean, we could just keep talking, but like tree, uh, teamwork makes the dream work. So back when I was in San Antonio, I talk about my boys, my boys, my boys, but like I was the visionary and they worked like hell to make it happen. Mm -hmm. I've always surrounded myself with people that are like hardest workers in the room, but it's my vision and my lead that kind of gets us there. Mm -hmm. You know, like they, they're top videographers and stuff like that but like without the vision mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's hard yeah you definitely have to have both it's a crazy I appreciate thing. that glory um, God, yeah yeah no i think <clears throat> just for like creators especially like having you on being i guess essentially the first youtuber on the channel my boy is a youtuber but he be bullshit inside so <laughs> and that's why i'm calling you out bro but uh being the first YouTuber on the channel, I feel like it was great to have somebody of your caliber. A hundred percent. I think the biggest advice I could give journey. any creator is just like, if you're in it for the money or you're in it for the followers, just stop doing it because it's not going to come. It sucks because they hear the cliche statement and they, they just don't want it to go through their skull and realize that's the facts. That's what it is. Like, stop doing it for the clout. Stop doing it for the money. Like, do that's it because I say, you enjoy it. Impact and enjoyment. 
Like, but it's real when I say it though because I did it before the AdSense program. No, for sure. So it's like if I did it before the AdSense program, if they took away the AdSense program tomorrow, I will still do it. Right. You know. Right. But what if they took it away tomorrow? If they took it away tomorrow, then uh, <laughs> Nickelodeon, <laughs> I'm coming like, for you. TikTok, <laughs> TikTok, Snapchat, here I come. Snapchat <laughs> snapping away, baby. Now, nah, okay, so uh, let's talk about the creation process a little bit more too. For sure. And just mindset behind current era because you know we have gosh i hate current era the vlog era <laughs> the prank era <laughs> mr beast the, the who mr. said beast that era you know what i'm saying yeah like so <laughs> i'm just playing by the way it's interesting and, and what i want to learn you hear what too, i said no i heard you okay i heard you i'm just playing guys cut that <laughs> <laughs> but what i want to learn too is like i always ask all my friends like they have a million dollars, a million subscribers, a million whatever, right? Mm -hmm. I always ask them different questions to see like where they're at now. Sure. And kind of where they want to be with their mindset, how they plan to change their mindset and what they're actively working on with their okay. mindset in their state. So I can see your point of view from where you're at, whether it's whatever metrics that we're measuring. And then I want to talk about that because I can then take that learn from it and say okay if this is the thing that you're now just getting onto at 1.5 million 3 million subscribers whatever you know what i'm saying let me adopt that at 300,000 subscribers let me sure. adopt that at sure. three properties in my pro portfolio or x amount of dollars in my 100%, account you know what I'm 100% saying? so what are you like really focusing on in mind for me i just feel like i've seen i've been on youtube as long as youtube has been i've seen people come I've seen people go. Mm -hmm. I've seen people go ri get rich, and I've seen people get broke. Um, and ultimately, YouTube is it's a hamster wheel. It's a hamster, it's a wheel, hamster wheel for sure. Where you just make content, make the money, make content, make the money, make content, make the money. I don't see. I don't see you just doing YouTube, and things magically happen for you. I think like you have to use what you've built and kind of like use it in a way to make other things outside of YouTube work for you. Mm -hmm. So whether that's Logan Paul using his fame for getting on WWE mm -hmm. or whether that's Mr. Beast using his, his fame for and his money for starting a chocolate bar business that can run if the channel goes down tomorrow. Like... This game is not, it's, the money is not promised and it comes and it goes and it's not consistent. It's never been consistent. There's been high months and there's been low months. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's just, I mean, I think it, in a lot of things in life though, it's like high months, low life, low months, whether, whether you do real estate or whether you do, you know, you have your own business, there's high months and low months if you want to be an entrepreneur and if you want to be, you know, in this game. Uh, not working a regular job. Yeah, I mean, I just think like YouTube, the platform changes so much and, and so quick that I think like, I just think you got to have things working for you outside of YouTube for sure. Mm -hmm. I think for me, I just got so comfortable with like making the money that I was making that I never really felt like doing anything else. Like building a business. And I also feel like it also held me back from the other things that I have to offer for the to this world. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't see myself being 40 years old making videos about shoes, and that's all I'm known for my entire life. Right. I feel like I have that era in my life, and I feel like there's so much room for me to grow. I'm only 25, and I feel like the world is an oyster, and I feel like... There's so much more to offer to this world. And I feel like it's kind of like the guy that peaks in high school. Like, I don't want to be the guy that peaks in high school. Right. You know what I mean? Right, right, We used to right. have our whole lives living. It's hard, too, because I feel like I'm going to love shoes forever. For sure. And I'm going to always have a fire collection. For sure. And, and I don't stuff. think you should ever stop YouTube. I don't think I'll ever stop YouTube. <laughs> but it's just like chasing that hamster wheel. Yeah. And it's hard, too, because... Yeah, making pivots on your channel or starting a new channel. Like, pivoting is not easy. No. Retraining the algorithm. It's funny because people say, oh, it's the algorithm. No, you do need to retrain the algorithm. You do need to uh, re redo some videos or hide some videos to let your algorithm to see new SEO and get on that new pattern and know what to push. Because if you confuse the algorithm, 
then it's not going to know what to push because its whole goal is to what? Put videos in front of the viewers. And I also think, like, you have to be full force on YouTube, like, at all times. Like, if you don't have yeah. a team, you got to be studying. You got to be seeing what did well, what didn't. You got to see thumbnails. You got to see retention. You got to see creation. You got to see ideas con and trendy new ideas, too. I think that's been my biggest problem lately, especially. Like, I mean, there's other external factors that aligned with me slowing down a little bit. But... I was always like, I'm in it for the passion of it and helping people like learn through tutorials and building evergreen videos, which has a great long term effect. But at the same time, I know how hard I have obsessed over YouTube. And I know that the peak of me obsessing over YouTube was not enough. Like I could go for I could go harder. For but sure. I have to sacrifice something else. For sure. So now I'm in the state of like, what do I sacrifice to get to where I want to be? Yeah, bro. The moments because that I've done the best, YouTube is it. That's all you that's breathe. It. And I remember that when I played football. And I know those moments. I know those times. Trust me, that lasted for a while. Right. But at the same time, I was running a six-figure business. I was a college student. And I was playing football trying to pursue the NFL. Right. So like, and I remember the peak of that but i'm always doing something else so it's hard you know what i'm saying like i'm in that weird position of still like bruh i could do this i could do that and then like i'm still trying to grow my portfolio right. and all right. those things right so i'm like how can i align growing my real estate portfolio with content and all the other and ideas? they always say like it's like oh just hire employees but like the employees are not gonna care like you do bro it's just gonna hit different yeah i don't know it's life is a really tricky thing bro and i think like for me, it's like, yeah, don't get too comfortable with YouTube. But at the same time, it's like, you got to focus all in when you really want it bad. And, and it's funny, like, it's funny hearing you say that. Not like I haven't heard it before or whatever, right? But sometimes you need to hear it that 17th time to hear right, it, right? Right, And I was at Vid Summit a few months ago. And one of my homies... Um, He's always been real with me. He's got a few million subscribers. He does food content. And um, he's like, bro, he's like, I was telling him, I said, it's crazy. Because in the moment, and there's different ways to look at it, bro. But it's crazy because, like I said, external things. Like, my grandpa passed away in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Like, I've been going through a lot of stuff with my family before he passed away. Going through a lot. This has been, like, a rough-ass year for me. Like, going through a lot of different things. And as I talk to him about it, and he's like, oh, what's up? Like, what's the growth looking like? Because I'm supposed to go out there and collab with him. Three different, two different occasions. I haven't been able to make it. So and so, whatever. Yeah. And then, like, the other one, I don't. he wasn't mad at all. Like, literally, it was my grandpa's funeral. Like, I'm, right, like, I'm not going. Of course. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I had it scheduled, and then, like, things change. And he was like, completely understand. But at the same time, when I seen him in person... All love, all everything. And he said the same thing. Like, you have to obsess over this. And everybody needs to understand that this is your number one priority. If you want to get to where I'm at, if you want to get these type of bags, right. if you want to have this type of impact, if you want to get this type of audience, you have to go crazy with it. And I'm like, that was what made me be like, damn, bro. Yeah. I need to I get mean, right. I'm at I'm at a point, bro, where I feel like I've lived multiple lives like youtube has blessed me god has blessed me beyond anything i could have imagined with youtube and i've done it all bro like i've done it all i've been to like you know after the logan paul fight we were at the club with like david dobrik and jake paul and wolfie and chris brown and like in la and like mm -hmm. you know i feel like i've done everything there is to do on youtube so I feel like next 10 years, I want to dedicate to something else, mm -hmm. which is getting into acting, which was my first passion before YouTube, um, which is a much bigger scale and a much bigger ceiling. Mm -hmm. Personally, I think that like, bro, if YouTube is your passion right now, then chase it and get it, dude, and grab it because it's only getting bigger. Um, but I think like for me, I am beyond blessed. Even if I kept doing YouTube for the next 10 years, still be blessed to do it. But 
I feel as I've, especially with the shoe thing that you can relate to, my whole career I felt like I've been in a box. Hmm. And I feel like I can't grow outside the box because of the algorithm won't let you Mm -hmm. from the shoe stuff. You know, I I had success one time with the pranks. And then I just came back in the box. Right. And um And see that's the thing too. Like like what you're talking about right there, like I'm hearing that from people that's bigger and I'm like, again, I'm measuring because it's all about how you measure success, right. right? And the way I'm measuring it is looking at what like I said, impact. Right. This video has huge impact. That's my highest priority towards success. So I'm like, oh, I'm fine if this video gets 12,000 views. Right. And this one gets 700,000 views and it doesn't have as big of an impact. Right. I'm like, the one that I care about most is the smaller one. Right. But again, I think, then it's like, you got to find the balance. I think it all comes down to passion, bro. Yeah. Passion and not following the money. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, I'm just really, I'm just trying to grow outside of what I, I'm trying to push myself to the limit and do what I know that I can do, which is really be one of the top actors in the world and we say it here and it sounds crazy I, don't, like, I mean i don't think it sounds crazy it's funny because i was just talking to uh i was at a event and somebody was like uh talking about how because he's a billionaire and he was like talking about how he's gonna create the next walt disney <laughs> and the lady sitting next to me laughed and i looked over at her i said what you laughing at he getting money and you not like what is so funny? Like it's Crazy. funny because people really be laughing at that stuff. Right. It's funny to me that they're that's the funny part. Like, right. The people that are laughing. Hundred percent. I'm like you're crazy, bro. These people are the ones that's actually making stuff happen. So for me, I mean, it's hard for me to tell you like what to do next with YouTube because I've kind of like it's happened for me. But if you want it bad enough, you'll get it. A YouTuber told me this many years ago before I hit a mail. He's like, you'll get it you'll get it yeah yeah no i'm not and i didn't believe him because i was like but how but how as a little kid like yeah, how? Yeah, i want yeah. a million and he was like i see it in you right. you'll get it and if you want it that bad then you will get it but i have to stay i have to do the same thing with acting now yeah i have to want it more than i want to breathe i have to breathe it in and breathe it out study the greats day in and day out mm-hmm. you know so I think it comes down to passion. Your passion will fuel you and it'll allow you to do the things that you want to do and then everything else will follow. For sure. For sure. Yeah, no, I'm excited. Really, I, yeah. I'm uh, I'm excited. And you see, like like you said, it's a breath of fresh air when you come on my channel and right. film videos because it's right. like a whole different vibe. 100%. It feels organic 100%. as hell. Like, you right. know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like, because I'm like, this is the stuff I really want to talk about. Like, yeah, I can make the video that goes, gets a lot of views. But I'm like, I don't want to talk about that stuff. I don't care about that right. stuff. Like, yeah. why am I making the video? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'd yep. rather take the long road. It's going to take a little bit longer, but it's cool. Like, we're going to get there the right way. 100%. So that's kind of how I I'm be. proud of you, bro. Keep Appreciate grinding it. it bro. You and too. Um, big things only from here. <clears throat> okay. Let's, uh, you want to wrap it up? Yeah. They've Time been for here. dinner? They've been here for like 10 minutes. Oh, the girls? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. The girls are out. We just we got gotta done do a shooting. part two next time in Portland. Sh- yeah, we just got done shooting my uh, <laughs> new video. We've been filming a lot, y'all. We've, We've been filming a lot. Oh We've been going God. crazy. All right, fire round. Let's hit them up. Let's just finish it up right here. Yep. Okay, fire round. Um, oh, what's the greatest shoe of all time? Oh, Concord Eleven. Jordan Eleven. Oh, greatest shoe of all time, oh, bro. You say that so quick. What? That's my favorite shoe, but like People, greatest shoe bro, of all time. You're not the first person I said that on the podcast. At all. Uh, I know, but like you're like the greatest shoe of all time. Like I haven't had time to think about that, bro. People ask me the question all the time, so I'm just respitting the questions out to y'all. Okay, sure. That was like a freaking fire round. How okay. many pairs of shoes do you have in your collection? Maybe like seventy. But okay. like some in Austin, some in San Antonio, some in LA. <laughs> okay. What is the most you spent on a pair of shoes? Seven thousand dollars. Nike Air Mag. Nike Mag. A couple years back. They and went you up. ran a mile in those? What I did you do? I ran in those. I hiked in them. He was hiking. I had to do. It. I was breathing for YouTube, bro. I was you, breathing oh, yeah, in you the YouTube. For 24 and hours. I said, I do not care about the shoes. I'm gonna get a million views. Get the views. No, nah, it wasn't even about the views. It was about the art. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. All right, on, right, right. All right. Break it down all from right. a business standpoint. Oh, for the mags. You you paid. It? I paid. Okay. You paid. So 7, when, when you get a million shoes. views for a video, around the time the CPM was like six seven thousand dollars for a million views. Yeah, that's about every okay. video yeah. I would film with the mags would hit a million views. Okay. So I multiply my investment times five or something. Okay. I feel like over so in all the time. So you spent seven thousand 
and you made 30 or sure. whatever. Yeah, we'll take it. Just for example. so Just for having him in the video. Buy the shoe, make the investment. So all small YouTubers, buy the Mac. Not sure. <laughs> right, right. No, no I, it, it, they were trendy at the time. It doesn't make sense anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I got mine late. Right. But I ain't even made no videos. I don't know. Maybe it still work. I don't know. We'll I see. see. I barely take we'll mine see. out of the case. I, they're just we'll so see. pristine. Okay. Um, how many shoes you got? What you got there? Boom, boom, boom. Uh, if you could only have one shoe in your collection for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, Presto off white. All white. All white? All white. Really? Bro, the most comfort? comfortable shoe will match with everything. I feel that. You should go with the black, though, because then it'll really go. I with... love white shoes, bro. I feel Concord it. Concord 11. I feel that. Okay. All right. Well, you want to wrap up? Uh, tell them where they can find you. We'll have everything linked down below. All right, y'all. You can find me over at uh, Jimmy Donaldson. Y'all can find me at uh, <laughs> Legit Tim. Everything Legit Tim on socials. I appreciate you guys for watching. Jordan Brand, invite us next time to the Zion event. I don't want to sneak in as a guest. Peace. <laughs> all right, y'all. We out. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, don't forget to download. Don't forget to do all those things. Give us a five star rating as well. I appreciate you guys' support. Yep. Oh, uh, and this year, what? DJ went to the streamies. And I snuck in because of DJ. So shout out to DJ. <laughs> oh, oh boy, that got him in. <laughs> That's actually funny. I forgot about that. I snuck in, baby. <laughs> All right, we out.